Okay, everybody Three. stop talking about the uh, Everybody stop talking. I like, I, like the old my hat. I like the old polyurethane dye that will eventually just be round. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, those old, stop. like, yeah. you know, those those the dice sets, un, unused dice sets from, like, the old basic games. Oh, man, are going those for, are like, valuable. Yeah. Those are going for, like, hundreds of dollars well, on eBay. Yeah. And oh, got, look at this. Gordon's got, yeah. got yeah. some old school stuff yeah. there, doesn't <laughs> That's what I like to see. I don't have yeah. my monster manual. Taped together with duct tape. Yeah, yep. duct tape on them. Nice. Those old D and D's are such hunks of shit too. I they are. To, They're garbage. Like trying to color into the crayon, keep snapping the crayon, and then melting the crayon on there. Get in there. Then <laughs> yeah. you got this greasy friggin' thing that sticks to your hand, and you dirty <laughs> fingerprints in there. You know, you're old school gamer when when you have you have like I crayoned my own dice. Yeah, I crayoned my dice. Yeah, if you have, if you I left my them. dirty fingernail D and D, you know, into that into that crayon crevice. Well, they get those like chips on them. I may still have, I have to check my, um, so for those, I, I, speaking of dice, I have like my bucket of dice for when people come over and they don't have dice. So it's like, you know, just take something out of the bucket. And I think, uh, I think I may have some of those old ones in here somewhere and they've got like, they're all stumped up. I don't know. I don't see them now. You've ever I, been to Tom Bowman's house, Les? Have you seen his miniature collection he's got? I have. It's it's yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, so it here's is. so here's one. Uh, this was from uh, I think basic set. You can see the rounding that's taking place mm -hmm. there and the, the fade and a half fading. Oh, yeah, yeah there. So, but yeah, this I have a um, that's from my uh, from my dice bucket that I that I just save for people to to use. All those like fast dice. We get we get like free dice as gimmies and stuff like that. They just go into the bucket. <sighs> for uh, for visitors all right so let's talk about this game though and all of the crazy shit that is going on right now so last time uh that we played a team sorry i'm doing my dice bucket here. um last time we played a team uh you guys had been spending some uh quality downtime back at dresden you learned a couple of things you learned that you know dresden had grown uh, largely, you know, you were, you guys were only for gone for the better part of a month, but even in that short time, you could tell when you had returned, uh, atop Skyway, um, as you guys returned <laughs> to Dresden, that things had changed, uh, even since you had left when you'd left, you know, Dresden had fortified itself. King Harlakar and his dwarves were there, uh, retaking the, the place. And, you know, Commander Geyer had been essentially made the commander of all the crusading troops of Dresden. Um, Irabet had been, you know, essentially made, uh, you know, warden of Dresden uh, by Queen Galfrey. And, you know, things were happening. But things were happening in a way that was, you know, it had gone from when you had left it had gone from largely an armed camp, uh, essentially fighting a, a holding action and uh, against retreating demons that had, you know, haunted this place for decades, literally decades, uh, to something that was growing more and more like a town, like an actual town. There was a lot more people there that were not obviously fighters or crusaders or condottieri or dwarves on the warpath there was shops starting to open there were pubs starting to open there were farms starting to be tilled even though it's you know when you guys return it's december um you know the the year end uh the year end was coming there were still people and this is in the this is in the far north so it's you know there is snow on the ground people were clearing it off preparing the ground to to uh you know, to plant crops in the spring. Uh, you know, there was a lot of cross river traffic on the on the Sarcosa River that um, you know people were going back and forth from from Mendev to Dresden and bringing supplies and things. Um, even Horgus Guerm, your old friend and and curmudgeonly uh, merchant colleague, uh, had been bringing you know uh, uh, had upped the amount of of uh, supply trains that were coming up from. Um, from the city that uh, whose name that I always forget the, that we started this campaign in, uh, uh, Kenebris. Uh, yeah. So um, I always I don't know why I can't. Two victory points, there. Two experience yeah. points. <laughs> uh, but um, you know things have changed, and for the better. Uh, in your discussions with Irabet and Geyer and Harlakar, you you guys learned that you know there had been a lot of successes and that Dresden was rapidly becoming sort of the jewel of Queen Galfrey's military crown. You know, even as Dresden was expanding the range at which they 
kept the demons away and the demons were withdrawing from the northeast of the of the world wound the southwest was was getting hit the south and the southwest was getting hard, hit harder and harder and there was a couple of you know setbacks not the least of which is iomade's herald being called in by a by a despairing iomadean priest um, and being taken by baphometian forces and brought back to um back to baphomet's home plane as a prisoner uh, resulting in, in uh, not only the defeat in battle, but the suicide of that particular priest. And so as much as Dresden had improved, the South and the Southwest had seen setbacks. And so as you were in Dresden, St. Limeron, uh, one of Iomade's heralds, uh, not heralds, but one of her, you know, um, avatars i guess assistants you know whatever Rudy you want calls. To call them. yeah, yeah no, well maybe you never know uh they just she's not called the inheritor hey, Harold, for a new you, reason yeah hey harold you up <laughs> 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 yeah it's like <laughs> wyd you know that kind of thing what you doing <laughs> um so yeah saint limeron comes to dresden draws you guys in especially uh you know especially flash art into the presence of the sword of valor and basically says look i'm going to determine if you're worthy to go on the next the next level of this quest you guys she asked you three questions philosophical questions for the most part um got your answers and was basically like okay i think i think you guys are the right guys um uh, to do this gave some gave some presents so uh, um one of the things i got uh is an email from um <coughs> from Gordon earlier. And while some of these uh, is just stuff that I need to deal with with Gordon personally, um, there was a question about the atonement spell that St. Line Marin gave everybody, a free atonement. So the deal with that is, uh, Bardos, that uh, everybody gets the ability to cast atonement once. Um, what they can't do is cast it on themselves. So if, say, somebody goes on a murder spree and then wants to get out of jail tree free card, is that what Atonement will do? Well, Atonement is a spell well, that basically... As can't you know, I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> asking for a friend. Yeah. Basically, God will get six <laughs> chances to get fixed, right? We, got, <laughs> we can atone him six times. Well, it was meant... It, what it was meant to do was for you guys to go... You're essentially going into Baphomet's realm, and they know that, and that's dangerous. But ultimately... They've Saint Limeron and to and you know by proxy Iomade knows of what has gone on, for example, with a, with Arushale, um, and that there is an opportunity for you guys to be a force for bringing the oppor There's an opportunity for you guys to bring the possibility of redemption to creatures that might otherwise never have that opportunity and the Arushale is sort of the model for that she's a succubus who who essentially said i'm i'm quitting i'm i'm not going to do this anymore i'm going to worship desna and and you know she was she was put under interdiction there were, there were demons chasing her bounty demon bounty hunters looking for her i mean you guys killed several of them and it was only the intercession of nocticula really that made awesome. what made uh, Arushale uh safe i mean she basically said you know you know, as queen of succubi, Nocticula was like, look, she's one of mine. And now I've put out the word that anybody going after her is going to have to answer to me. So basically made her safe. But St. Saint, Saint Limeron Limeron basically says, look, there's you guys have successfully done this. There's opportunities for you guys to do it again. And you should look for those opportunities. And I'm going to give you the power to cast atonement, whether you're a fighter or a paladin or a, a, a wizard, because this is a cleric spell. Basically, it's, you know, atonement is, this spell is a, is a fifth level spell. This, this spell removes the burden of misdeeds from the subject. Any creature seeking atonement must be truly repentant and desirous of setting right its misdeeds. If the atoning creature committed the evil act unwillingly or under some form of compulsion, atonement acts normally. However, in the case of a creature atoning for deliberate misdeeds, you must intercede with your deity. Atonement may be cast for several purposes of, you know, restore class, restore alignment change, restore spell druids, redemption or temptation, which is this one. You may cast this spell upon a creature of an opposing alignment in order to offer it a chance to change it al its alignment to match yours. 
the prospective subject must be present for the entire casting process. It's a one hour cast. Stay away from me. Under completion, <laughs> under completion of the spell, the subject freely chooses whether it retains its original alignment or acquiesces to your offer and changes to your alignment. No duress, compulsion, or magical influence can force the subject to take advantage of the opportunity offered if it is unwilling to abandon its old alignment. This use of the spell does not work on outsiders or any creature incapable of changing its alignment naturally. In this case, however, where you are makes them the insiders. You're the outsiders. So that rule does not apply. Atonement can be used on any creature that has performed acts against its alignment, regardment, regardless of the actual alignment in question. It won't work on Gatto anyway, guys, because he's not truly <laughs> repentant. <laughs> but yeah, so Limeran basically, to, to answer your question, Gordon, for Bardos and for Farina, uh, Limeran basically walked along and placed within you the, the ability to cast this spell once uh, on a truly deserving subject, should you encounter one. Bardos would find that fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> True. It also, but it also uh, leaves in, in a lot of cases the decision to allow it up to you. Um, you are now acting. For those of you who don't aren't automatically, um, you know, beholden to some other god, you are now sort of in large part acting as agents of Iomide, uh, and you have some of her power within you, even if uh, even if you don't uh, necessarily ask for it. Trina will never use it. She doesn't like anybody enough to trust and to think they earned it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, didn't. I think that's about what Fletcher would say, too. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, it exists within you. The power exists within you. You may never use it. It may be well beyond the, 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 um, the end of this adventure when you go on with your otherwise normal everyday lives that you find yourselves in, in, your, in your later golden years that you find somebody truly worthwhile to do it. You carry it with you for as long as you live, unless it's discharged. That's cool. Does that make sense, Gordon? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Neat idea. Right. Like it. Uh, all right. So there was a couple of other things that Gordon's uh, email brought up. One of them was the... Um, uh, was the book that was given to Farina, uh, which I, my understanding is that Farina gave it to Bardos? I did. Okay. Uh, I have to look and remember exactly. Do you have exactly what that book did? Yeah, it's just the one that does the, I have it down here. Hang on a second, I can read it. So I can, I can go fetch it. Got it here. I just got to find it. It's getting really complicated. I'm going to try to get together a note with all the quests and geuses that we got to do now too. There's like <laughs> six or seven of them. Going yeah, we on. need we need like some sort of uh, daily planner. To, you you know, just to ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> what was like the, the seven the healthy day. habits? Seven healthy habits of an adventure <laughs> party. Like we got to get ready to prioritize our missions. I'm your DM, Stephen yeah. Covey. Stephen Covey, that's right. <laughs> Time to sharpen a saw oh, that's on a, a hop gun. <laughs> How to win friends and change alignments. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. All right. Did you did you find that, Gordon? Uh, so I haven't, I haven't found it yet. Fascicular thing. Let me do a so fine fascicular. Where are those? Hey, Mr. Phillips. Yeah. How Red's you, getting I, lost in maze and has details of entry points that I'll are constantly know. shifting. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can, so this book um, has a lot of, has a, you know, so the thing about where you are right now is um, okay, that's wrong. Uh, so where you are now, essentially this entire plane is an enormous ever-shifting maze. Uh, remember Baphomet is a minotaur and minotaurs and mazes. This was originally, this entire plane was originally a labyrinth designed by Asmodeus to house Baphomet when uh, Asmodeus was, was um, Asmodeus created this as a prison for Baphomet to sort of get him out of the way. Um, but because of Baphomet's Minotaurian nature. He was able to he was able to figure out the labyrinth and ultimately control it, much to Asmodeus's uh, chagrin. But the labyrinth still exists, and it changes all the time. Um, so what this book does is it allows you to navigate it, navigate it effectively 
without having to because mm -hmm. as mortals as as prime material plane people who do not have any special abilities within labyrinths you could live out the rest of your days wandering from hall to hall never seeing anything um it's this book that allows you to sort of pinpoint where where places are to consult when you need to find specific places um so that you can you know try to teleport there or you know figure out how to get there that kind of thing this basically is a, a manual for using baphomet's labyrinth and also it handles things about the imago lens which is what mm -hmm. bardos got which bardos says yep and then it's plus four to save versus insanity and confusion and immune to maze spells, which I'm not sure what, what that means or how that works. But Well, a maze spell is basically, uh, if someone casts maze on you, it sends you to an extra dimensional maze, essentially, that takes you time to figure out how to get out. Right. It's right. not impossible to find your way out of. And when you do eventually find your way out of it, you, you return back. But it basically throws you into an extra dimensional uh, labyrinth that you have to find your way out of before you can get back to the prime material plane. Is what a maze spell does. What it doesn't do is give you an amazing hat. <laughs> I have a question. Sure. The uh, the welcome demons there, they have fled, right? They are fleeing. So let's, yeah, let's go to the map real quick. And I was looking at another map. So hold on, hold please. Right. So the last, the last time, uh, what you guys did was um, once the discussion had sort of... Um, wound down <laughs> to uh, yeah, violence, as long. they sometimes do. <laughs> um, you guys attacked, and this Odinka, who is a Marilith, came out, and she was obviously sort of the boss of um, of this place. Uh, and she was like, look, you guys don't seem for real. Uh, you guys attacked her. And I believe, I mean, we're, we're on round two going into round three, so it only took two rounds for you guys to destroy this Marilith. Once Odinka had been killed and it happened very quickly uh with Flashheart and flesher uh sort of thing and i believe Flashheart, you loaned smite evil to everybody so that that yeah. ruined a lot of plans there too um the welcome demons began to yeah. evacuate one of two of them had like stuck illandar and storm with their uh proboscises and we're going uh, we're about to suck juices out of each other or out of those guys uh they have de that, that came out wrong. I, we're not yeah, doing it. Freezing. <laughs> like to take those, over. Like to take those words there. back if I can. Sorry. Let's just, uh, let's just erase that. Anyway. Um, yeah, they, they detached and began sort of flying away. They have wings and they're, they're lifting off uh, right. and trying to get away. They're like, you know, My we, question did, we owe her nothing. We're right. out of here. I actually, I thought this was an important point. I think we mentioned this last time is why are they flying? Aren't they teleporters? Could they well, have been popped on out? Well, they were they were already so the two that are by storm were already flying because they had sort of flown up to try and get right. above storm so they could get at Illandar. Uh, so those guys are flying. This one's actually on the. I was just um, trying to see if we learned something about this plane or or the rules of what they're governed by is that they maybe not always popping in and out on us. That's all. Give give me a knowledge planes if you have it. Ooh, okay, I will. Actions and to skills. answer that to answer this. Very on point sort of question. Just say they can do it at will, but not all the time. <laughs> Fifteen, yeah, you're not, you're not. Sure. But Bardos knows. You got forty. Jesus Christ. Bardos knows. So Bardos, you uh, let like me see. Computing, calculating. <laughs> yeah. Just want to check something real quick. Uh, better. Yeah, these these uh, guys. A are, bit, yeah. But. Yeah, we can hear you. Mine. Say something. Something, how's that? Say something interesting. Yeah. Something, no. <laughs> it does definitely look better. Why be yeah. different now? <laughs> I can hear you. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I just I sent Mike a, an email earlier that because I've been having trouble understanding him the well, last couple of weeks since he changed I his system. When I was plugging in this external mic, that it was automatically flipping to that. And I'm guessing it hasn't been. So I had to actually go in and set it to use. He's yeah, starting to drink on Sunday yeah. nights and he's slurring well, his words. Well, well, <laughs> we, we don't want the external mic. We want the original mic. I haven't been on here for three weeks, so I got I just I'm just ready. Now yeah. I have to tweet, you know. That's I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right, right after you had your, 
you're sucking off demons and you can go right into your... Uh, <laughs> well, I'm certainly not going to tweet that. You know, this is right. this is a family game. Family so, show, yeah. Um, but, uh, um, but yes, uh, so yeah, they're, they, they, the, the, the ones on Storm were flying. They have like the, these little fly wings that stick out of the back of their cloaks and they're sort of backing off. Um, this one is stepping backwards. This one here is actually stepping backwards away from Fletcher after... Frankly, he's seen what Fletcher is capable of. Yeah, um, and is is sort of moving back away from there. And Lothar is sort of watching this, like <laughs> Fletcher. I'm, oh. I'm not going to be surprised if they offer you a job application. You're like, <laughs> you like to kill? We got a perfect plane for you. They, they have the opposite of the atonement spell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's still atonement. It just changes to them. So you're atoning for all your good deeds and then changing to evil. You could do it that way. That's that works. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Gatto, it, just mentioning that. <clears throat> Gatto. So I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, so as we go into round three, um, these guys are breaking away. Well, this guy got killed and vermed, by the way, uh, by Ilandar. Um, this guy is, is sort of flying backwards away from you, and this guy is stepping back away from Fletcher. Um, they are definitely... Uh, flying the coop. Disengaging as much as they can. Now, what you do Lothar actually the thing is Lothar I'm just, I'm just trying to think of how I do this Lothar has can see both of them so Lothar give me a quick perception check can you throw us on there Les oh yeah sorry 21 21 all right let me get these guys real quick haul you can't do anything to us as long as we're not on there Jennifer yeah <laughs> there's that Hey Jennifer, with your character class, do you get do you get to pretend that everyone else has your, your same teamwork feats? My cat does. Oh, so your cat qualifies as the other person? Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. I, I don't, don't know where you guys are. You can put yourself anywhere on here that you, I think that you feel all like people work together. It looks like it to me too, but it just seems too good to be true. Uh what was the question that was the knowledge planes do uh these fly demons use teleport? Yeah, but I was like, do they use teleport or if they're, they're flying now? Is there a reason they're not using it now? I was well, yeah, you don't know, Flash Art, but um, <clears throat> Bardos, I mean, you've spent, you know, since since this campaign began, you've spent a fair amount of time studying uh, the ways of demons, and you recognize these as Coloxus demons. And furthermore, you recognize them as not being capable of auto teleport. Um, Lothar, with your 21 perception, you see that both of these guys, as they withdraw from the members of the party who might attack them, are pulling uh, sheets of paper uh, from the insides of their, uh, of their vests, and they're sort of unrolling sheets of paper, sheets of parchment. Uh, so that's uh, where we are when we go into round three. And uh, if I recall correctly, and according to my notes, Gatto, Flashheart, Fletcher, Lothar, and Storm all have the ability to smite evil. Gatto, you were grappled up until the end, the beginning, the middle of last round, but now you are not grappled because the person who had grappled you is, is now dead. dead and has fallen to the ground. So you are not grappled now. We do right. not have to smite evil anymore because the person that it was against has died. Yeah. Already dead. The smite evil was just it's against, only against Oh, so that disappears then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still, still wrapping my brain around some of this. All right. Yeah, Excellent. I'm, unless he shares we don't have any other for a different opponent. Well, you do. I mean, there's still Kalaxi demons that are, you know, wandering about. They do look like they are looking to get the hell out of Dodge, uh, and they're certainly withdrawing from you guys. Farina, did you uh, did you roll initiative? Oh, I thought I did. I must have hit my button. I'm sorry. It's okay. Mm. Let's get the click on your icon first. That's why. That was probably the perfect sounding soda bottom gurgle that uh -huh. just came over the thing i mean it sounded like a movie soda got soda soda bottle gurgle yeah, it sounded like an expiring demon to me yeah <laughs> little, 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 death little. rattle all right uh okay so was it, uh, jennifer why didn't you end up why did, did you not click your guy you see it down there on the bottom right i see it but it didn't lodge itself into the turn order hold on a second let me get you in there you gotta click your icon first and then do i it. did click my icon first I 
There we go. We'll get you in there. You must not have it. You don't have it set up. Whether it did show up this time inside, keep the 16, but did it work? No, not a core. You don't have it set up. uh, You got to use Don's special formula. Yeah, you've got the tracker misconfigured somehow. Uh, I'll send it to Don. Don, IT network is coming online. (laughs) Have you tried turning it off and on again? All right. Um, so that being the case, these guys are withdrawing. The uh, the Merilith is on the ground, sort of in front of you, Gatto. Gatto, it's your turn. You're the first uh, first up. You see all this happening. What do you do? Uh, first of all, I tell Farina that there should be no space between the Empress and the brackets for Tracker. <laughs> and we're all like, that's weird. <laughs> was, was, was that as a, a weird thing to say? Did, did you say that, did you no say that as a free action? Between the <laughs> Empress, Caravan, you have an Empress saying uh, bracket, then 1d20 plus 8 plus the word tracker, plus... and then in bracket. No, the 1d20 is before the Empress and everything. Yeah, well, I don't know which ones are Ampersands in parentheses because I'm just not that girl, but I got two brackety things 1d20 plus 8.08 and ampersand that's the and right okay. square square bracket square bracket square bracket 1d20 got it plus your initiative bonus got it space okay. ampersand which is the shift seven got it, got it. yes quickly bracket oh i have a mm-hmm. space between the ampersand and the nope nope, bracket. nope see no space there squiggly bracket tracker closing squiggly, squiggly bracket, bracket square bracket square bracket i think we're good now Okay. <laughs> try it. Let me try I don't, can it. Suspense is killing me. What, what language uh, Gato was speaking in? It sounds like <laughs> it might, be, it might be abyssal. I think it's abyssal. Yeah, no, it's infernal. Uh, infernal. Yeah, that that works. There, yeah. 2308. There, it did. It worked. All right. So uh, due to that, all that work having to take place, Thank we're going to keep we're going to keep that one. You're welcome. Five uh, experience points to Gato. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Gato, you are up. Got your message. That's cool. Um, what are you doing, bud? Um, that is it. I'm just basically staying standing there right now. Okay. Uh, all right. Farina. I mean, I'm just going to have Otto uh, check with a perception check down oh. the hall um, just to hear if I hear anything. Just down this hall? Yes. So, yeah, the hall itself is not very long. Uh, it goes maybe 25, 30 feet and then ends in a big set of big metal double doors have that have, uh, no, no, you materialized in this room when you crushed. So, and that answers another yeah, one. We haven't gone crushed. anywhere. When you crush the wooden labyrinth that brought you to this place, uh, the wooden labyrinth that Nocticula gave you, um, uh, it brought okay. you, it brought you here. This is considered to be a, <laughs> like a welcome zone uh and there are probably dozens of these scattered out throughout all over the plane that um that baphomet has essentially uses to funnel traffic to, uh, of the uh, funnel funnel the creatures who come to his plane they almost always unless they have some sort of special dispensation yeah, they the almost start. always end up one of these welcome places right. and they, they're posted you know there are demons who are posted here that check to see you know who's coming what uh, um, you know? What their business on this plane is, that kind of stuff, and will provide them with guidance to going to where they need to go. Uh, theoretically, they also serve as guards to make sure that nobody enters the the great labyrinth un- without without leave. You know, without a, a purpose here. Would it be appropriate? Has the battle been done that long, or would it be appropriate that I could possibly have an arrow knock, or would that seem antagonistic? You can have an arrow knock. Okay, I knock it Bat- The battle has been going on for, I think we're in the third round, so about okay. 10 seconds. So you would certainly have enough time to sort of draw and go. And then Otto has a 31 to listen at the door. Okay. Yeah, the battle's still going on, actually. Okay. As far as you're concerned. Well, there's still demons flying around, and, and they, but they seem to be moving out. Uh, you're trying to, to, uh, to leave. So, so Otto, so, so let's do Otto first. Otto listens to that door, 31 does not hear anything, no sound at all on the other side. He also does not get any smell out of it other than the sort of the normal ambient demon smells and stuff like that. 
I mean, are we trying to knock out the welcome demons or are they running away or? That's a party strategy question. Yeah, we yeah. probably ought to get rid of them so they can't message whatever. Yeah. I think it's. Right, well, then I will <laughs> release my arrows yeah. Yeah. into this girl. Somebody call the archer. <laughs> the archer has arrived. Yeah. Let's do okay. it. All right. Have our special like silent whistle. Wee! Okay. It's your health less. And all your... Two. Oh, two. What a way to start. Is that hit? Sixteen is a, that is a miss. The and thirty-one that is... is a is that a no? That was something else, wasn't it? And that's oh, that's, that's, roll. that's a hit. Also, also a miss. The Twenty-four is a miss. Twenty-four is a miss. Whoa. This guy's zigging and zagging up there. Whoa. Wasn't and she then, close enough for me that she would get benefits from my? From my uh, no, I'm looking at your green circle. That's your uh, area of influence. Yeah. Yeah. There's no buffs on us because we're fresh in, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, that's it. That, the only that, thing we had was uh, smite evil against the one uh, demon, Odinka. Up against Odinka, yeah, Odinka. Okay. We were using yeah. some weak Han Solo uh, trickery to get in, and it didn't work, so we had to shoot our way out. It was pretty weak. I mean, uh, no, it was fine. It was, uh, you know, it, it, it could have worked. Papers, please. What papers? <laughs> papers. I don't need no stinking badges. Wait, that didn't work. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Farina, yeah. So, Otto goes to the door, doesn't smell anything out of the ordinary, doesn't hear anything at all, even despite a 31. Uh, the, the metal doors are engraved with symbols that look like mazes, frankly. Uh, and there are some sigils on them uh but you can sometimes see these sigils kind of move on the door i mean otto sees this he probably doesn't understand what what's going on here but sometimes those those little markings on this map that seems to be on this door move around i'm gonna tell bardos over my shoulder that otto's looking at some things that might make more sense to him than the cat okay am i, am I able to speak <clears throat> uh sure reaction? absolutely i'm gonna tell everybody that they're about to try and use scrolls to escape so kill them quickly. Oh. Good to know. I failed. Bring them down. Because I don't get <laughs> I don't get to act until after they do. Do you hear this guy over here after Lothar says that? He he emits a, an, a, an expletive in abyssal and begins <laughs> turning to run when it'll be his turn. So uh that's Farina. Bardos, what are you doing? You've just been notified that um Otto, uh, you know, there's something over there on the door that may be needs your expertise beyond that though yeah i guess i'll uh demons I mean, are escaping it's not my wheelhouse to attack these fly things so i'm gonna go to, to, i'm gonna walk oh, the fly over things. To and see what he's looking at okay so what he sees uh what you see now is on these doors so this is a big set of metal double doors and incised on the doors there's there's sort of this portals in the middle and then there's this big sort of well, your first thought is it's some sort of engraving in the metal or some sort of, uh, you know, bas relief on the metal uh, that um, looks like a maze. And at first it looks like it's decorative. Um, but then as you're watching, you can see there are certain elements of it that will move around periodically while you watch. It, it obviously radiates uh, um, magic. Uh, that magic is divination magic. Um, and you can see that periodically there are portions of this m engraved maze that seem to move around. And not with like a click or anything. They just sort of like, and it doesn't do it all the time, but periodically in different places will do different things. So it's on the door itself. Mm -hmm. So give me a quick knowledge planes check. 28. All right. So a couple of things that you surmise from this. The first thing is that you're guessing is that this door is reading so you know you you know from before that portions of baphomet's labyrinth which is the entire plane remember portions of it periodically change uh and and vary so that not only is it a maze but it's a maze that changes all the time what you're looking at is far too small to encompass the entirety of this plane but it's possible that this map for let of laugh of lack of a better term represents the portion of the labyrinth that is nearby or maybe perhaps beyond this door um but it's also changing as well okay and and does the book give me any benefit looking at this 
Uh, to a certain extent, the book helps you know that that's the case. Um, the book also allows you to interpret these maps from the point of view of being able to teleport to portions in there. Now, on this case, on this door thing, none of these areas are labeled in any way or anything like that. They're just portions of it move around. Some areas are noted with like little, uh, you know, protuberances in the metal that seem to indicate some sort of specific place. Nothing's labeled you, and the book isn't really helpful in that regard okay let me ask this is it a map that is static but shifts places or is it a map that is completely changing at different times so if you have a 20 foot corridor length could that maybe move here but it's still a 20 foot corridor or does that 20 foot corridor shift to a 10 foot corridor both both okay so very complex yeah it is i remember this idea. was yeah, this was a this was a devilish prison to hold a demon prince, um, and you know that kind of thing's happening. All right, so uh, anything else you want to do, uh, Bardo? Nope. No, no 25, uh, 25 I'll, still I'll pet, misses. I'll pet Otto. Pet Otto, good, good kitty. Uh, Fletcher. So you yeah. see this this welcome demon was behind you, and he tried to stick something in you a minute ago. But um, well, actually, I don't know that he did like he stuck anything what do they use oh he tried to bite you uh yeah. with his little proboscis looking thing missed as i recall and now he's backing away rather quickly as he's you know he's got this piece of parchment in his hand and so he's moving backwards and your guess is that he is moving over to here to try and get away well he frankly he wants to get away from you specifically and the guy flying is also grabbing a well, parchment yeah, he has. They both have. They they both grabbing out parchments from inside of their inside of their cloaks. So these are fly and, head guys, but they have like yeah. regular normal clothes on. Well, I can't kill them both. <laughs> well, that's, tr that's trouble. You kill one, <laughs> but then it's their turn. Yeah, <laughs> 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 All right, sorry. Um, you okay, kill we'll one. Or at least grab one. Um, quick rules question, Les. Sure. I mean, I'll, so I'll screw up the answer, but I'm happy to try. <laughs> but I think we had this discussion once before. So okay. the welcome demon is probably what, like, what, 60, 50 feet in the air or something like that? No, not that high. Probably more like 20 to 25. Basically, he, uh, maybe not even that high. They both flew up to try and get at Ilandar, which they did. So Ilandar is on a top. Uh, storm. Oh, okay. In the so saddle storm is right next to him. Oh. Right. So technically, Ilandar is still in Storm's no, saddle. No, I uh, wasn't the last time. You and got out of the saddle. Yeah, Did you get to the down, ground? Yeah, I slid down the back of Storm to get away from. Oh, him. that's right. I remember saying you're just pulling some Legolas shit there. Okay. Yes. Uh, so you're you're down on the ground now, but right but they had gone up there to attack him when he was still in the saddle, which yes. I would guess is probably what fifteen to twenty feet in the air. Probably about 10 feet in the air. Not, it's, she's not that tall. She's not that tall. All right. So 10. So they're probably at about 15. But if he, so storms though, like against him. So if he does something, she might get an attack opportunity, for instance. Well, theoretically. So this guy is actually, he's moving backwards away from storm uh, and upward. So um, he's, he's flying backwards and up uh, to try and get away from storm. And uh, technically, I mean, we she's haven't had an opportunity reach, to that, so. but he, he may end up doing, you know. Yeah, she's got a 10 foot reach. So, so yeah, if he moves, if he does a regular movement, then she, uh, she will get an attack of opportunity, but only a and single attack. The same with these. Yeah. All right. So then I am going to attack the welcome demon right smack in front of me. Okay. I so I want to, any... just as a side, oh. I want to order some business cards that say less hostile or welcome demon. <laughs> <laughs> His health bar is not showing less. Is that just because he's tucked underneath? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Hold on. Okay. NSA, NSA, NSA is going to say, hey, we got a new one on a watch list. <laughs> yeah. For, for the FBI guy watching these videos, I, I was just kidding about that. I was, yeah, I'm not a welcome. <laughs> We're all cosplaying. <laughs> I just got a, I just got a private message in Roll20 that's a thumbs up sign. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the first. I'm going to do all the hits first and then do all the right. damage. All right, 39 is a hit, strangely enough. All right. Second sword attack. Okay. 37, also a hit. 
third sword attack. It hasn't come through yet. 23. 23 is a miss. Okay. And then the arm attack. Okay. The um, the Glabrazoo arm. Yes. No alignment problems here. <laughs> so I'm saying job. 27 is... Let me check. Let me check. That is a hit. Okay. So... Barely um, a hit. Two hits with the sword. So here's your okay. damage for that. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's just rock that out. So 33. That's it, huh? And 28. All right. So that is 61 points. Yeah. And then the arm. Okay. Damn, son. 44. Hard hitting. Okay. Then I will attempt to grab him. With the with the Glabrazu arm. With the arm since it hit. All right. So you get a, you do get a free uh thing, but it's at your skill level. So I mean you still have to do the CMB and all that kind of stuff. So it's CMB plus four, I believe you told me. Okay, yeah, that sounds probably like something I would do. So I think how and Rudy for him to snip his head off is unbecoming. <laughs> so I roll a D20 plus 29 then, right? Uh, would your CMB is a 25 plus 25? 25 when raging, yeah. Then plus 29, yeah. Now that's not an auto. Demons are tough. 40 is... Enough. It is enough. So yeah. So, uh, uh, but not, but not as not many as you think. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So now you, this guy is trapped, uh, grappled essentially inside the Glabrazu claw as, as you do it now, because of this, because of the nature of this claw, you've got him held. You still have a free hand. Uh, now your Glabrazu claw is gra is essentially under the grapple condition as well, but your other hand is not. Now, if you use that as a as a two handed weapon, that may be problematic, but um, you'll have to take it whatever penalties of using a two handed weapon one handed would be. But in uh, in this case, you do not necessarily suffer suffer grappling penalties for your, the entirety of your attack because it's just the uh, one and, arm. And coolly, I can switch to my regular claws and just attack with those and suffer no penalty. Uh, so good point. Yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. All right. In the meantime, he ain't getting away. That's he is to... stuck uh, by... So this is the first time that you guys have seen uh, Fletcher do this. And those of you, I know uh, several of you, uh, maybe most of you have expressed to me privately, uh, you know, how worried you are about Dan and Fletcher. Um, <laughs> this isn't helping. Well, you should be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Dan, starts well, Dan coming to the, if Dan starts coming to the video with a big crab claw, and then we're going <laughs> to have, have to have an intervention. I'm Got lobster to the... Yeah. Uh, okay, so it is grappled. All right, so that is... That's it for you, Fletcher, right? That's it for me. Okay. Welcome, <laughs> demon time. All right, this guy is grappled, so he is going to try and break out of that, uh, that grapple. So... And that is going to be, it's either a CMB of its own at, I believe, minus four because of being CMB grappled. CMB versus um, uh, Fletcher's CMD. Yeah, but I think because of the grapple, there's a, there's a penalty, right? Or is there, oh, there's no penalty for trying to, other things is, he's penalized. And, but trying to break the grapple, there's no penalty. All right, right. so his CMB is also plus 25. Nice. So what is the CMD? CMD? What does he have to do to break this grapple? 36. 36. All right. Not a, not a pushover. Not, uh, not impossible. Here we go. Whoa! Oh. He oh. breaks the Damn. grapple. He swings away and, uh, and gets out. Now that would have been a, uh, do they, standard just, standard that's action. a standard. So he still has a move action. He is going to use that you don't have reach do you fletcher i do not have reach okay so he is going to with well he can't because it's a withdraw as a full round action so he is going to freaking skedaddle one two three four five six so i get an attack of opportunity uh no, he didn't pass through a square. That's yeah. He just he just left the square. He didn't pass through it. If you had reach, he would be threatened. That's why I asked. Well, but the, actually, the rule says when you leave a threatened square is when the attack happens. You've never done that as a 
Uh, yeah, so it's always when you pass. Yeah, I keep thinking. <laughs> okay, okay. Got yeah, sometimes we uh, we take the rules that we've just twisted. always. <laughs> Otherwise, then what's the point of having withdraw action? Because you can pretty much always withdraw. Uh, well, withdraw action protects him. So, like in this case, I'm about to do a withdraw action from the other welcome demon, which saves him from the. Well, it saves him from an attack of opportunity from Storm, but it disallows him from doing the scroll. Correct. Right. So there is and, a penalty. And the welcome demon kind of disappeared into the well. Wall is that? I no, he just him. looked. Well, you can't see him because he went around the corner. There's ah, a corner there. But he would have moved, maneuvered around the corner. He's not flying. No, he's still walking. Okay. So they only have uh, they have they have these like gross looking fly wings uh, and fly heads with proboscises and stuff that they talk out of. But the rest of their limbs are normal. They have hands and feet and they wear boots and clothes and you know that kind of stuff. It's like a dude with a fly head, fly proboscis, and some wings sticking out the back. Help me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. So this dude, uh, much as I mentioned before, is going to do a withdraw action, uh, and he is going to move one, <coughs> two, three, four, five. So he is moving, and he is moving upward at an angle, too. So at this point, and I'm going to mark this, he's about 40 feet in the air, and I'm going to mark this with a four, just to give it a, an idea of what that looks like. So three, he's, you're just making a sporting for him, right? So the, the ceilings here are very high, probably 60 to 70 feet. So he is moving upward and back. He's more or less probably, he's moved past Lothar. So Lothar is sort of down here, and he has gone up above him and a little bit behind Lothar. Uh, and that's that. Lothar, it's your turn. I'm going to take a five-foot step to here. Okay. Do two arrows at the welcome demon. Ooh, Okay. All right, 26. first one, 26 is a hit. So 17 points of damage. Ouch. And a second 26 doing 27 points of damage. Okay. Uh, so 27 and 16 is? 27 and 17. 17 is 44. 44. Real archer has appeared apparently. Well, keep in mind that Lothar is using a bow that was uh, that, uh, at least as far as you guys are are aware, was gifted to him uh, by the um, by the representatives of um, his deity himself. If I believe, if, if unless I miss my guess, Lothar, this bow was in the small church that Jesker was was sort of hiding in. Oh, yeah. out, in, is, out in the hinterlands yeah this is the bow of Arastal, and it keeps Arastal. awakening it keeps awakening to different powers as as i move on so yeah mm -hmm. so yeah he's the, the arrows that come off off this bow glow with an unearthly green light and the entire region when he fires it smells like pine needles and uh and the, the, the lands of the north <laughs> And nice. gin, and, gin and tonics the whole, the whole, the whole area smells like a delicious gin and tonic so does that does that demon survive that? Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Wow. You can you can see his uh, health bar, right? You know, well, no, because he's kind of in a wall, and that's not important. Secondly, how is he this, in a wall? No, 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 no. This this one down here is what he. No, is talking about. This, oh, yeah. you shot at the other one. Never yes, mind. I shot at this one. Oh, okay. Never mind. Hold on a second. Forty-four points. Did you say? He's still alive, but uh, those arrows. He's he's sort of so he's moving backward, and you can see. Can you see him at all? I can. Okay, so you and see I he's at those doors. You see him sort of spinning the door handle uh, on those double doors that he's standing next to, uh, but then the arrows hit him, and he's like, you know, I mean, you obviously hurt him badly. You see him sort of stagger up against the the little wheels that he's using to try and open that door, and, uh, you know, there's, there's that black sort of demon blood coming out of the side of his very sort of nice cloak robe that he's wearing. Um, those arrows hurt. And here's something I've never tried to do before, but should be interesting. This welcome demon that's flying 40 feet in the air, mm -hmm. he's still holding a scroll, right? Correct. This is probably not going to work, but I'm going to have Siggy try to go take it from him or at least shred Ooh. it on his way through. Ooh, okay. So Siggy's going to fly up there and using eagle, cl or eagle claws, or owl claws, right. so shred gonna the do scroll. His fly attack, and he's going to okay. target the scroll. And try to either just rip it from his grasp or shred it down the middle and make it useless, whatever. Okay. Either one of those is obviously effective. 
Okay. Uh, paper or cloth has a, um, so it does have a bonus. So it has no hardness and it has hit points per two inches. So <coughs> it's, it's actually, I mean, it's a piece of papyrus. So it makes sense that it can be damaged. Now it does have magic associated with it fairly Right. specific magic right so uh, it will be difficult there may be some difficulty there but yeah go ahead do, do you have the attack uh this is essentially a uh, flyby. A, 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 a flyby attack right do you have and the attack so rolls for siggy i, I don't do. think siggy's ever attacked anybody before he's not that's why i said this will be interesting we've never this done it before but first he gets, time he gets three attacks claw claw bite so he's going to try and claw claw bite the paper yeah, so okay. my my mental thing to him is going to be take that paper away from him or destroy it. Okay. Basically. So three attacks. Okay. All right. So the normal AC of an object is AC 10. In this case, this object is in the hands yeah, of a demon. Right. So um, I... Whoa. I'm not going to get it. Does, um, it this is just fun because I've never done this before. So whatever you decide is awesome. So I've got a question for the rules lawyers out there. Would this count as a, an attack against an object or would this count as a disarm action? It's an attack against an object. And if the object is possessed, it has the possessor's AC. If that's the case, then the possessor's AC, and I'll just, I'll just let it out here, is 26. Okay, so, so in this missed. case, he would have missed it, yeah, and sort of flew by. Now, now is he hovering near the creature, or is he flying No, by? it's a flyby, so it's he's gone fly past. By. So he's gone up to attack. So basically, if he were moving, because okay. he can move like 80. It's, it's kind of like spring attack. So I know whatever. what flyby attack does, and, and owls have that yeah. automatically? Okay, all and right. So whatever, well, he has Because it otherwise, it would provoke. He has it as a trick. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, so otherwise, in flyby attack, it would pre provoke. precludes attacks of opportunity when you do. Let's those say things. it's it's twenty feet to go up to where he is. Okay. Because I don't remember what altitude Siggy was at, but let if if this guy went up to forty feet, let's say it's twenty feet to get to him. Mm -hmm. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. That's not the end of his move, but he will have done basically just a big circle kind of a to, big Immelman, to, yeah yeah to try to shred the the, the thing oh. or take the parchment from him and then swing back around okay Does it require he, concentration if you're attacked like that while you're trying to read a scroll uh no not in this case i mean if he had managed to hit it potentially but yeah. in this or, case i mean you're just basically the the the, the fly demon just pulled it away right. as the as the guy came as siggy came by Less it's so hot to use the word Immelman. <laughs> Thank you. Between that and this hat, I think uh, I'm in for a big sexual payoff. You're good. Um, so that was fun. That's the first time Siggy has ever attempted to attack anything. First time, I have to say, a solid a solid effort, and, and, uh, a, and a it would have been a clutch thing if he didn't succeed. And he rolls just like his master Lothar: five, <laughs> six, and twelve. Big bucks, no chucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lothar, is that for, it for you? I think. I am. I'm done. out of options. I'm done. Thank you. All right, Lord Flashheart. Uh, you just saw Fletcher, uh, Fletcher beat the tr beat the snot out of a fly demon. That fly demon cried a little and then ran around the corner. At which point you see Lothar shoot up a couple of arrows down that hallway. Uh, you're not sure what's going on in there. Though. And right. then this this other guy is flying up. He's about forty feet away, and he looks like he's you know sort of mumble. You know, he's mouthing the words of some sort of spell. I think I have a few spells, but they're I don't think they're anything we're gonna be useful to this. It was litany of thunder. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this one. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna step within line of sight of him. So it should be right about here. Uh, line of sight of which one? Um, so uh, this I, I this guy? This guy, yeah. Okay. How how far would you say I'm away? Uh twenty uh, twenty feet. All right, I'm gonna try. Um, lit, uh, we're gonna try Litany of Thunder, which I have never used once. So here's a here's a new try, a new chance. This is that the target becomes deafened and confused for one round. Oh. Lit Litany of, of Thunder. Okay, so yeah. is it? Let me take a look at this. This is interesting. I never. I don't think you. Uh, he hasn't. I've ever done this. So okay, yeah. Litany of Thunder. Let's see. 
call down a thunderous boom on the enemy. Yeah, I went to I went to Don's pimp my paladin uh, workshop there and uh, <laughs> Don's the, uh, paladin workshop, Hodge, the Hodge School of Paladinhood. Nice. Yeah. Uh, all right, fortitude save negates, but there is also spell resist. Uh, do they have SR? They do indeed. So in this point, you have to uh, roll a d20 plus your caster level to try and exceed their spell resistance. All right. So my caster level for this is, is going to be off fourth level or what is it going to be? Off right? Well, it's your... Well, uh, I think it's 14th. Yeah, I think it's 14th because you're, you're, I mean, you're casting paladin spells just because you don't get those spells until your fifth or sixth level. So it's DC 20 plus 14. Okay. Yep. Ooh, 32. All right. Pass the SR. Uh, the spell gets through. Now I need to make a fortitude save. Do you know off the top of your head what that DC is? DC 21. DC 21. All right. Well, they've got 15. Oh, man. For it. So this, this could be, this could be something. Here we go. 19. Wah, wah, wah. So did not affect him. So fortitude save Wait, um, I think, I think negates. I said you get I said you had to exceed 21. Yeah, DC oh, it 21, it said. DC 21. I thought he said DC yeah. 15. Okay. No, no, DC no, yeah. Plus 15. Oh, all right. So uh yeah, this uh this hits. So the you see this you uh, the, all of you hear this enormous sort of explosive sound. Kaboom go off in that hallway. Uh you see Lothar uh and Flash are both of you see this guy kind of like you know, fall backwards away from the doorway um, and uh, and stagger around a bit. You can see he's got his his normal human like hands next to his, you know, and I don't know if flies have ears, but he's kind of like going around his head. They're like, ah, that happened. And he is uh, uh, you can hear him making squeaky noises and, and, and that kind of stuff. And he's sort of staggering around. So he is deaf permanently until cured. And, and he's confused uh, around. He's confused for around. But I also think he was he was trying to cast a spell, right? I'm assuming that interrupts the spell. He was well when you saw him and when Lothar saw him, he was trying to open the door uh, and sort of get through there. Maybe to sort of you have to probably expect that at least in the in the in this region, these guys know the labyrinth far better than you guys do. So he right. probably was scooting out of there to try and get to a safe place where he could teleport away. More Hopefully, safely. it gives somebody else a chance to put a little hole in him. Yeah, well, he's confused now, which basically, so the confused condition, uh, you know, they have to roll a DC, uh, they have to roll a percentile die that determines what they do. Um, so there's that. I assume everybody turns to a flash, right? And they're like, what? I got spells. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> looking over like, spells? what the hell was that? Who cast that shit? All right. All right. So that is flash art. Excellent. Illendar, bottom of the order. A lot of things going on. There was just a huge I boom. Think in that. Of myself as first next round. First next round. Okay, that's it's it's optimistic. Yeah, that's my line. <laughs> that's why they call you guys <laughs> the Optimus <laughs> Prime. Um. So. So the question, I, I, I wonder if the question that Ilandar is, is struggling with here is, do we want to capture one of these and, and put them to the question? Or do we want to just wipe all these guys out? No, the question is, do we do this safe and take the long road and copy off of his good friend Lothar? Or do we just let Storm do what Storm does? Okay. Is that try to out Fletcher Fletcher? Is that what's if, if I get a vote, I say <laughs> unleash the dragon. Yeah. yeah. Hold up. Oh, no. Dead man switch. Dead man switch. <laughs> Weren't ready again. I, think, <laughs> I was ready. Next time somebody gets him gets less of a gift, give him a wah wah pedal. He can just, he can just, ready to, <laughs> just wah wah that, that slap. I've got, I've got, just got a tab here that has it on there. It's a YouTube slap sound. I mean, it's, you know, I've got three screens. I've got 700 tabs. This isn't easy. Uh, excuses, excuses. <laughs> that voice. I love oh. that voice. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to uh, mix this up a bit. Okay. Storm's going to charge, which in this case, she'll use her wings to charge. All right. A flight charge, which we uh, acknowledge is doable. Yep. So she's going to charge. Okay. Um, she's got five attacks at the end of this. 
<laughs> okay. The two claws uh -huh. are going to go after the scroll. Everything else is going after the actual bug. Okay. Okay. So. All right. And because we ruled earlier that it was an attack roll rather than a disarm roll, uh, again, the, the AC stays the same, but. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the claws against the, uh, against the paper, the rest against the dude. Oh. All right. All right. So let's oh, see. Jesus. All right. 31 bite for 35 points of damage and six points. Holy. That's fine. So 41. Why don't, why don't we just do these thing by thing? All right, so 41. I'm going to take out the 41 for the bite. So the bite just scores, and you hear that you hear this fly demon start to, well, I think screams not to, not putting too fine a point <laughs> on. Uh, a 41 claw for 25 points of damage. Now, nine points of holy damage isn't a thing here because it's just a scroll, uh, but also a crit for <laughs> 29 points of damage uh, and 11 points of holy, which if we just double it, you know, for because you can't really crit chart a piece of paper. So that oh. comes out to 58 plus 25 so essentially the, the 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 scroll is shredded into frankly molecules confetti. at this point yeah it's confetti it just it's just clawed to pieces the 37 wing buffet uh for 12 points plus seven that's another 19 on the demon but the screaming begins to get louder uh what you, what you doing there oh again because my last Oh, is a fumble. So uh, the 32 on that last wing buffet is uh, an un unconfirmed fumble, but it does uh, stop. So, okay. So the the scroll is shredded. Uh, the demon is injured. He is screaming from the bite and the wing buffet. And... Um, she and ends, like, <laughs> so she ends right up against him in the right. air. Yeah, she's sort of encompassing, and he's medium sized, so she's all around him. I mean, basically, yeah. the dragon is encompassing the guy. <laughs> uh, you know, sort of wrapped around him. A lot of this, this to a large part, obscures some of your vision. Like Ilandar, you and Gato really can't see that welcome demon anymore, right? Uh, because of um, because of Storm's bulk. Okay, because of the struggle snuggles. The struggle snuggles. That's what it is. Storm is given a little struggle snuggle to a flyhead. Um, all right, so that is what about you personally, Elendar? What are you going to do? Um, what about you, Dad? What about you? Five, ten, <laughs> five. Flash art. So from there, uh huh, you run up there. I can at least see the demon, right? Absolutely. Okay. And, and a bunch of what you know, sadly, look like uh, magical scroll confetti floating down from forty feet up. <laughs> um. So. I'm going to do, are we 14th level? Yeah. Okay. Do a caster level check because I'm trying to spell. Okay. This did not work. So. Did not work. Spell okay. resistance fights it. It's the, it's the pernicious the effect out. of this crappy plane. If the wand come out, magic missiles fly towards it and then just dissipate when it gets there. And aren't we 13th level? I was going to say, I'm only 13th level. I think Gato got an extra level for something. Okay. Oh, you guys didn't do the kicker? No. Or you got an extra level. Sorry. <laughs> That's what I got to do. I got to throw a, a kickstarter. Yeah, I think um, all right. Uh, okay. That's it for you, Ilandar? Yep. Done. All right. Round four. Anybody want to do anything free actions or anything like that before we jump right in? Go for it. All right. Gatto. All right. Wrong one. Shit. Hold, oh, please. Wrong one. I hate this job. <laughs> <laughs> Here, wait. There, it's out of the way now. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay, cool. Now just go back to where you were. All right. Boop. And then I did that. Okay. Sounds good. Farina. So, okay. oh, do, I need to, do I have to move in order to see the demon now? Yeah. Well, 
is yeah because i mean the the enormous bulk of storm is now obscuring the much more moderate bulk of the demon so yeah right now you can't oh, he's see got it precise shot so she sh he should probably just get a i do have precise shot but i don't know if well, that's you could maybe you could give, give me a perception check let's do it that way All right, perception. Here we go. 36, is that it? <laughs> All right, yeah, you can see, uh, you know, basically you see mostly uh, the demon's legs, which are sticking out below Storm and kind of going like this. <laughs> and kicking around. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you can you can see uh, portions of the welcome demon, enough to shoot, you think. I think I'd have to shoot. Okay, mm -hmm. well then we will go for it. Arrow's knocked and ready. All right, here we go. Twenty six is a hit. Good. Okay, two arrows. You mean I'll just do them all? I don't, I okay. Have, I don't have a cool macro. Uh, twenty five is a miss. I need to go down to macro school. Twenty eight is a hit. Right. So Point three you... days of fasting to accomplish it. <laughs> <laughs> and now the real archer steps up. <laughs> Still not going to touch what you did. It's amazing. Okay. And seven so, is oh so okay. So the first one, second one, okay, third one, and then um, two, four, six, d six. Yeah, this these guys are all evil. So okay, including Storm. So fifteen plus seventeen is thirty two. Yeah, that yes. would be half of what Lothar did with two arrows, Lothar. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's grown he's grown in power and authority. I uh, know uh, he's got a badass bow. <laughs> he's got I'm a badass. Start bow. working on my cleric spells, <laughs> my cleric skills. <laughs> uh, all right, Freena, you go to move or anything, or um, well, I guess you can't. Uh, you did a full attack, didn't you? Yeah, I did. But you I am do, gonna I'm gonna move Otto. Okay. Out here. Uh, okay. I really don't know anything about the space, but I'm gonna put him by this entrance right here. Okay, sounds good. Oh, uh, oh wait, wait, wait. He's this this guy is close within. Never mind. I can get him down there. Never mind. I'm gonna move him all the way down. Okay. That's awfully far. I think with I his 40 move. foot, that shouldn't be any. <laughs> well, he won't have any else. he won't have any attacks at the end. No, nope. he doesn't need attack. Nope, that's okay. I'm just gonna put him down there so he can't attack next time. Okay. That's put it. Him in front of the doors. Well, I don't needs to be bigger too. He's large now. Uh, we decided that is he right? large all the time. I'm to be large. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah, I thought so too. He's That's... large, long like that. Large, no, he should be large. He's a long creature, not he's a tall. Creature. long. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if really do that. It's actually, actually I, he's there. Uh, we go. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Speaking of freezing. For this game, they always just do it's either a five foot space to take up or a ten foot space. So is it well he's taking up ten. I guess if I rotated him. Normal... They kept the reach rules though, because I thought he would have reach, but they say that long creatures don't get reach even if they're large. No, I had to wait for um for a storm to get huge before she got reach. She didn't get it at large. I feel it's a measure of my uh my maturity for not saying anything during that whole sentence. Uh huh. That was pretty good. <laughs> Until you said that, Matt. <laughs> Until you said that. <laughs> now we're less impressed. All right. All right. Farina, I think that's it for you. Bardos, what are you doing? What are you, Brew, doing up there? Does, uh, does that hurt, Matt? Is, is that painful? <laughs> <laughs> I really got nothing, and I think these guys have this under control, so I'm just going to pass. I want to open the door, but I shouldn't do that. So I guess I'm going to talk myself for six seconds into not opening that door and walk down here. Don't do it. You know we want to. So you guys, those of you who are close, you can hear Bardo's talking to himself menacingly. Uh, Fletcher. So the guy in the south down here, he's nearly dead and stunned, right? Uh, confused. The region blues. Yeah. 
And what has confused me that he doesn't. He well, it just means that he can't act normally next this round. Um, basically, yeah. I roll on a chart and uh, the chart tells me what, right what he does. Yeah, he does. He just does something. He, he's not really in control of it. He's just like. There's a chance flummoxed. he'll do something that he wants to do. Right. It, there's a chance. Yeah, he can act normally. But um, there are other chances yeah. that he doesn't as well. <clears throat> if you have the, this guy, the ability to go finish him off, I would suggest you go finish him off. And and it's probably more important to finish him off than the one on Storm. Correct. That guy, that guy no longer has a scroll. And True. Storm's going to just chew him. Nor, off. nor okay. the right to do anything because Storm's just going to shred him. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Then that's what we'll do. Okay. I didn't get to charge, so I only get one attack. I'm going to make it with the claw so I could try to grab him again. All right. Just in case he survives. Just in case he survives. Oh, you know what? No, you know what I can do is I'll do a two-handed sword, and I'll just make sure he doesn't survive. <laughs> okay. Also an option. <laughs> oh, that's a hit. Dear God, he rolled he a, two a two and hit. Yeah. <laughs> 41 points of damage. He uh, did not have that many points. So basically, as he's staggering around, two arrows stuck in him, uh, he... Uh, Fletcher just sort of ambles up and cleaves him in twain, and the two portions of demon fall to the ground. Wait, in according a... to the numbers, Fletcher stu- comes ambling up, stumbles, and stabs <laughs> him. <laughs> and then says, now you're welcome, demon. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to say thank you. Uh, he's gonna falls and accidentally the beheads him. Couple of portions, couple of couple of pieces in a pile of black blood, or a puddle of black blood, I guess. Uh, you know, much to Fletcher's amusement. So that's Fletcher. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> I got a bit of a problem here. I don't. I can't get away. I'm flying, except for there's this there's this this dragon right next to me. Um, I don't. Is that the confused one or the non confused one? Uh, the, the confused one is dead. The other one, it's this one over by Storm is the problem. And Storm's, so here's the problem with this. Storm's too close to essentially. What is Storm's maneuverability on his fly speed? Um, I think average. Do you steer like a pig? <laughs> or she's there like a pig or she pretty nimble? Well, they're pretty fast. Dragons generally are. Uh, what path? All right, so it's gonna stay there. All right. Uh, so I, I, they, they're forty feet up. So this will only affect storm. So this demon goes on full defense. And you see its wings begin to sort of flash like this. You know, the wings are moving very quickly. It's not going anywhere, but it's like the wings are rubbing against themselves. And they make this, you guys down below can hear it. It's kind of like, kind of like a, a weird droning sound, something that like locusts in the trees kind of make, but, you know, only one of them. Um, what it does is it is a, uh, a special ability, uh, or I'm sorry, a EX, which is a... Um, extraordinary something uh, called droning wings. As a standard action, a Colossus can create a mesmerizing display of color and a sound dampening buzzing drone. All creatures within 30 feet that can see the Colossus must make a will save or be slowed for six rounds. How high off the ground is it? So I need, well, it's only going to affect Storm. So Storm needs to make a will save. The DC here, sadly, is 24. So uh, he's a measurement. But in the meantime, that welcome demon has gone to full defense and he yells to Storm, please don't kill me. I can help you. Uh, here we go. Oh, wait. Uh, somebody uh, somebody wants to cut a deal with the demon. I don't know. That's allowed, right? Get Lothar. Yeah, get Lothar. <laughs> Lothar says, cool, guys. Uh, <laughs> you're muted. He's okay. he's he's muted, so I guess it is okay. I don't believe they're demons. I believe they're devils. But don't make deals with either one. <laughs> oh man! Look at your says, paladin handbook. Dad never lets us do nothing. <laughs> See the giant word no, <laughs> and uh, and behave accordingly. 
Yeah, I got an atonement in my back pocket. I got. <laughs> yeah, but you can't use it on yourself. Oh, you can't gosh. atone yourself. I we'll have some sort of murder suicide atonement pact. You know, with somebody else here. Uh, That's what we need. But hold on, uh, I've got to tweet that we need some sort of murder suicide atonement pact. That's gonna. That should probably go in the book too. Can you do? Yeah, can murder you do a suicide, murder suicide atonement pact? pact? No. To get away from all your crimes. No. In like 48 point fault. No. I wouldn't be a paladin if I didn't wrestle with these deep theological questions. <laughs> well, as you've already mentioned, you are the bankman of paladins. So I, I think this probably works. I can't wait until this, this whole thing, we're like finished with this, all the sixth book, and we get to go back and read this paladin handbook. <laughs> <laughs> You know how, you know, when they put on the things, don't operate while you're drunk and asleep <laughs> and with no limbs. Yeah. You know they do that because someone's done it before. So it's right. going to be nice with that with that lens to go back to this Paladin handbook. And well, yeah, what's, what's going to probably happen is as you guys, if you know, you are successful in the and you finish this and you go back and you get air in his hand and everybody, you know, goes their separate ways. And, you know, someday, you know, <laughs> a, a young paladin of Iomade just starting out first level, you know, going to be like, OK, here are the mysteries of Iomade. Uh, here's a little bit of history of the religion. Oh, and here's your book. <laughs> <laughs> here's here's your paladin handbook. Just read through it. You'll get an idea of what you the guy to flash heart. It'll, it'll have <laughs> all these a... beautiful succubuses over it, but they'll have like sensor bars <laughs> over all the. It's like ten-year-old boys finding porn for the first time. <laughs> right. Where did where did you find your paladin book? Well, it was out in the woods back behind the place woods on a mattress. <laughs> yeah, it was on a mattress that I found out in the woods. All the pages were stuck Ooh. together. Ooh. We need to take a shower just hearing the story. <laughs> All right, so he does this. He's got this droning going, and it's still going. It's like, and it's, you know, the wings are sort of bending the light weirdly. You're not sure that it even, those of you on the ground are not sure that it's, he's even doing it consciously because he yells out in common, uh, you know, please don't kill me. I can help you. Uh, uh, you know, please don't kill me. Please, let's make a deal. Uh, now, Lothar. Technically, not killing it and talking to it isn't really a deal. It's not you. He's asking. <laughs> oh, Just to be clear. <laughs> well, yeah, he's talking pretty much. At, he's, he's. Oh, you I know, know he's not talking to me. Screaming this pretty much at storm. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you guys down below can hear certainly hear it. We don't have to kill everything. <laughs> That's true. Maybe now, he wants to change alignment. Here's an op to... atonement opportunity. Now, <laughs> yeah, now that we did say now the no paladin's not even you on were about side? to die. But now the paladin's not what? I said now the paladin's not even on my side. Oh, I'm and always yes, on your side, Lothar. I believe months ago there was the uh, actually it wasn't months ago, it was when we were talking to the high muckety muck of Ioma Day. I yeah. specifically said accepting deathbed changes of alignment, no. And Fletcher agreed with that one. Yes. Just so at this clear. point, if it's my turn, it is. I am <laughs> going to attempt chains of light. What if they I'm really, really mean it? I'm going to cast Chains of Light against this <laughs> welcome demon. Okay. What is so, Chains of Light? Man, spell I mean, resistance, you... no. Okay. Uh, it, it does get a reflex save. A creature targeted by this spell is held immobile by glowing golden chains composed of pure Ooh. light. The creature is paralyzed and held in place, but may attempt a new saving throw each round to end the effect. While held by the golden chains, a creature cannot use any sort of extra dimensional travel, such as projection, blink, dimension door, ethereal jaunt, etherealness, gate, maze, plane, ship, shadow walk, teleport, blah. Okay, so no spell resistance. It goes right through that. Reflex save negates. What is the DC? Uh, that I need to look up real quick. Sorry. Sure Hang on. Let's see here. Reflex, I'm just going to tell you right now, is plus 19. Reflex is 21. <clears throat> I got to roll a one. I didn't say it would work. I said I was going to cast it. Yeah. Well, he, he dodges out of the way as these, you know, frankly, it's more like he was surprised by them as these glowing chains of light sort of materialize and try to grasp him. He's like, whoa, uh, and tries to get out of there. Damn it. Okay, well, that is my entire turn, casting the spell. It would have been awesome. It would have been, I thought. That would be cool. Why is everything going all screwy on the computer? Hold on a second.
because the gods of good know you lied about the pluses on that saving throw? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's plus 50. Against Sorry, I, I had to put uh, murder suicide atonement pack in the uh, I was putting it in the paladin book. Um, OK, so, yeah, he got out. He, he dodged that. So he yeah, yeah. was not affected. No. Uh, all right. Uh, is that it for you or do you want to move or Siggy going to do anything crazy? Uh, no, Siggy is done with the crazy behavior. <laughs> Mentally, just... I'll, so I'll tell Siggy, did you see what Storm did? Did you see what Storm did? Siggy's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> I tried. I tried. Uh, all right, uh, Flash Hearts. All right, I don't have any targets left here. Let's see. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, this guy is sort of fighting. He's still fighting Storm to a certain extent. He doesn't. He's not doing a whole lot of fighting. He's basically saying, "Please don't hurt me." You know, he's kind of like, "You know, please don't hurt me. Please don't kill me. I can help you. Uh, please don't kill me." But he's saying it. He's essentially saying it's Storm. All right, I'm gonna stand right next to Lothar. I don't, I don't, without compromising my alignment, I'll say, "Help us, how." devil or demon or i guess she's demon, demon. Uh, yeah says right on the name tag uh help us how so it, it yells out i i uh, uh I, I know i know this plane uh, I, I can i can help you I, I can help you get to where you want to go uh i don't i i don't know how how can i help you what what are you, what are you guys here for how much wood could a woodchuck cut could a woodchuck could you chuck wood well put yeah <laughs> i'm gonna work on that i'll come back all, All right. right. Um, we're cucked, Woodchuck. <laughs> we're cucked. Uh, cucked. <laughs> How many drinks have you had, buddy? <laughs> All right. So, um, I, I guess let's have it aside here. As a free action, Lothar is just going to stare daggers through the guy standing next to him. <laughs> okay. All right. What did Elendar do? Huddle up, team. Not Elendar. <laughs> what, what do we. Uh, <laughs> What do we, uh, <laughs> yeah, spit, like that that. Out, spit that out, Storm. You don't know where it's been. Um, the uh, as a free action, <laughs> let's huddle up the team real quick. Um, this could provide some shortcuts to us. Do we want shortcuts or just uh, or we just want to mop blood, demon blood off our boots the entire way? Demon blood, demon blood. All right. I don't trust blood. anybody. That's what Freeman said. You're good. <laughs> let's I, take I'm, a I'm, I'm, let's take a trip down memory lane for all the times <laughs> that all of you have made deals with demons. I'm not making any deals here. I'm and and them. and Gatto is not allowed to open his mouth. Where is Gatto, by the way? <laughs> He's invisible somewhere making deals with demons. <laughs> <laughs> but they've all he wants to suck his girlfriend too badly. Kill this thing, please. All right. Well, I'm just distracting it so Gatto can backstab it. <laughs> I'm assuming that's the plan. Forty feet um, in the air. That that Gatto is this is this a challenge to you? Forty feet in the air? I thought I thought you got that covered. Oh, I get, oh that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> what with all the deals he's made, um, <laughs> with, all, with all the yeah. tentacles he can sprout, he can he can just crawl right up the wall. All right, so, so Flash, you just go over there by Lothar, who is staring at you uh, angrily. And you just yeah. sort of uh, say, "What are we going to do here?" We I will bask. Guy? I will bask in the in the gaze of my one, <laughs> my, you know, the one gaze of my friend, as I say. He's resolute at not getting it. <laughs> How does one travel about this maze without, in any sort of sane fashion? You say it to the demon. Yes. He yells down. I'll tell you, but you have to uh, get get this. Uh, 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 Please leave me alone! Don't 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 kill me! Uh, you know, let me from invisibility somewhere. Wait. Don't say dragon, and then uh, I'll say <laughs> I'll say I'll say I won't kill you. I can tell you're lying. I'm a pound. I never lie. Is that little thing around his neck vibrating yeah. like like the, his reservation is ready at 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 some cheap restaurant yet? <laughs> your orders your orders up at. Uh, at um, St. Louis Chili's. Bread Company. Yeah, Chili's. Chili's. Your, your, table's, your ready. table's ready at Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, is that it for you, Flashheart? Well, he doesn't answer my question. Like, well, he's basically says, "Look, I can I can help you in a lot of ways, but you gotta you gotta agree to not kill me." Uh, I said I won't kill you. Yeah, but you haven't killed anybody. 
As far as I, you know, if you're thinking that, as far as this guy knows, you're the, you're, you're, you're the uh, NPC pack handler. Yep. I'm, I'm just a just a mere caravan guard helping this, this group out. <laughs> Every, everybody's <laughs> using it now. Um, <laughs> all right. But basically, he's, you know, he's, he senses some weakness on your part, even though everybody's like, you know, Lothar's like, let's take a vote. Who wants to kill? Kill, 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 kill. <laughs> and then Flashard's like, I won't kill you. Why don't you I- tell me what you know? <laughs> He's not, he seems unconvinced. I mean, you haven't really, you haven't really given anything to, to, to sway the crowd here, Max. Well, if he, so. if he gives it up, you guys are just going to slay him outright. I mean, he's probably heard what the other guys did with that, that Hobbit. Uh, that was that tied up Hobbit and B team. I mean, he's probably worried about that kind of stuff. <laughs> the murder Hobbit? The murder, murder Hobbit. Hobbit. Just an innocent Hobbit walking through the fire forest. And you guys tied him up and slew him. He's got a weird... <laughs> It's a, weird, it's a weird order to do that. All right. Um, the uh, demon, I don't see you have given us anything to keep you alive. You have five seconds. If I, if, if you leave me, if you leave, let me live, I will help you. I promise you, you have my word of a demon, of a welcome <laughs> demon. Very welcoming. Don't demon. we have a, uh, don't we have a, uh, I don't I have a detectability to detect, detect lies? Let's see. No. Uh, I don't know if you can say detect lies. You certainly do sense motive. Yeah, I will sense motive right here. Okay, so go for it. Let me roll the old bones. One moment. Sorry, I was I was off. <clears throat> okay, so action school. Sense the old motive. Twenty-eight. You get the impression that this creature is scared out of his mind. He had uh, that he had no idea what these visitors were capable of and the fact that you guys slew Odinka in a single round um, and then now two of his friends are also dead um, he's desperate to save his life any way that he can and with your sense motive role you you think that he will deliver Um, like you know he will uh, answer your questions and try to help uh, if if you guys will let him live you think he's legit now, that whole word of honor as a welcome demon, you're not sure that they have any sort of creed that you're aware of uh, that would, you know, sort of allow that. That's sort of like the dry cleaners code. But, um, you know, he, he seems desperate. He seems legit desperate to save his own life. Well, as all creatures are when they're in the trap. All right. So. Well, he knows he doesn't have a get out of jail free car either with that with that um, now shredded. Uh, parchment, which is almost certainly some sort of teleport spell. Yeah, again, interesting why he didn't have his own teleport ability. Well, Kaloxi, if you look at the, uh, well, I don't want you to look at them right now, but they don't <laughs> have teleport. <laughs> so, okay. Right. So a lot of demons do. Kaloxi do not. That's why they have wings. That's well, it's part of why they have wings. I mean, but it's got to be difficult for them. Um, so, one thing that you guys did notice is that both of them had scrolls. So it could be that they are issued scrolls of teleport that allow them to get back to where they where they come from, whatever quarters they have, uh, that kind of stuff, and that they're given to them, you know, maybe at the start of a shift or however this work works, or or it could be that their layers are nearby that they don't need teleport. They were what you do know is that they were trying to get scrolls out. Now you haven't had a chance to examine those scrolls yet. The the uh, remaining ones. But it could be th- your guess is that they are teleport spells. Okay. And it may be that they're the, that they're designed so that they can teleport to alert the greater guard. Could be. I mean, these are welcome demons. Yes. So, it, it, Storm, please tear this thing to little bits like you did the scroll. <laughs> Illandar, your turn. Yeah. If if no, if Storm. Unless is- you want to pass, I mean, you can do that. No. If Storm has not heard anyone out and out tell her, do not kill this thing. No, Storm has heard the priest say, kill it. Well, also heard, I think Farina yelled out, kill it, as did Bardos, I believe. Storm was already planning on that because this is one of the two that killed Ilandar. So Storm. So they, they wanted to ride to victory in a sea of blood. I think it was the exact word. <laughs> <laughs> it was a chorus of kill it. Yeah. Chorus of kill it. Uh, all right. 29 hits. Uh, let's go ahead and do these here. So 41 points of damage. Uh, so that's that's fun. 
Um, 38 claw for 29, 38 points. Well, that was, we only got through two attacks. That was enough. Uh, basically, you know, Storm looks around, everyone yells, kill it, at which point it just whirls around, bites the crud out of this thing, claws it, and, you know, and, it, it, you know, it's, it's wings stop, you know, kind of like, you know, kind of like start, uh, buzzing as it's kind of like shaking in in uh, in Storm's mouth, her jaw drops open and it just falls the thirty five feet or so to the ground with a ugly but relatively juicy plop. Actually, <sighs> all right, or we can do this the hard way. Let's do it. <laughs> and at that moment, uh, we fall okay. out of. Um, I was checking to see if we if fall out of it. falling down with it. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it has at least three silver pieces. <laughs> so, uh, so what are you doing now? I'm gonna call Siggy back to my shoulder. Okay, she comes right back. Um, so yeah, so you guys have killed all the demons. We fall out of initiative. Um, and Elendar's gonna thank Lothar for keeping him alive. So let's just recap here. We're on his plane. If the god of this plane knew we were here, he would do his utmost to make our lives a living hell because he controls his plane. However, he's busy licking his wounds from getting his ass kicked by uh, Nocticula, right? Yep. So we're he's hoping got a year to we hide. Can, we, we're hoping. What's that? Scared, and so he's hiding the best he can for the next right. year. We'll assume he's got at least one or two capable minions uh, that will be be uh, that we should probably stay off the radar until we get a little closer. Yep. But, if we're not going to ask directions, how do you want to proceed? Well, the we idea wander around this map and see what, what's what. But. The idea, as I understand it, is one: we have Bardos, who's the smartest thing we've ever met. He has a book that allows him to help guide him through this maze. If we can stay off anybody's radar by not leaving, not letting people get away, and not leaving survivors to go and tell, "Hey, there's this group of primes out slaughter slaughtering things," we probably have a better chance. So, do we have a, a yes. wait, 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 wait. all the bodies here? <laughs> if we slaughter everything and leave all the bodies along, they're going to know something's here slaughtering everyone. <laughs> well, we haven't dealt with bodies yet. I'm just saying we don't leave survivors to go and tell. We're not the Dread Pirate Roberts. We don't want somebody going to tell the tale. I'm going to grab so, a quick drink. I'll be right back. All right. So, do you? So, we want to? Do we have a head bag for all the bodies and then press to digitation the area for <laughs> for blood stains or what? I mean, it doesn't matter if there's dead things here. Nobody's going to know that we did it necessarily yeah. until somebody knows. But didn't, when you guys got here, wasn't there a couple of demons that immediately popped away when they saw you? No. That is a good question. I don't no, think anybody got away. I don't think so. I think that when we got here, there were the welcome demons that are all dead. And the only thing that left was while we were still talking. So there was no conversation or there was no attacking yet. There was a demon that immediately went this way. And yeah. I think that was to go get Odinka. Yeah. But he might have gotten away, right? But as, as far as I we think know, he came back with her. Yeah, as far okay. as we know, there have been no... That was the one that died over here by the door. As far as we know, everything that's seen us so far has died. There were I, four of them initially. Is there four dead? I see one, two, three... F I see three dead demons and one uh, Odinka. Oh, I think we're missing yeah. a demon. I think. Last one, there four of those welcome demons when they... He stepped away from There were three. three. Okay. There were three. Okay, All right. So we're good then. All right. So what do we want to do with the bodies? We just leave them out for display and just moving along? Like, we didn't see anything? Or are we... Yeah, uh, I mean, they don't have to... DNA typing or anything here. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, but if you have a, a good yeah. necromancer, if you're a good necromancer, you get them to speak for, speak to the dead, you know, speak to the dead or whatever. Paladin's guy is like, look, we, you know what we need is a good necromancer, you know, around here to speak with the dead to drag their souls. <laughs> My cousin Sal, he's a necromancer from way back. <laughs> My cousin Zano is a great necromancer. Yeah, he knows great. everything. Yeah, that explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so at, at this point, I think we search the bodies, get whatever we can that's useful. I think that one still has a potential teleport scroll. And then we have uh, Bardos and the book try to determine which, if any of these doors, get us closer to where we want to go. Yeah, I'm going right. to walk around and look at all the doors, Les. Do they all have the maps that change on them? 
They do. And uh, only so not the single door. So in a couple of places, there's a single door like right here. There's a single door. Um, it does not have a map. Uh, the double doors that you could see in various places, like there's two sets of them down here, one over here, uh, they all have these maps and they all exhibit the sort of same characteristics. You know, they look at first to be static and carved into the metal of the door. But upon closer inspection, you can see that they do seem to move. Got it. You want to check this one single door here, see if it's a broom closet or what's going on with it? Don, you there? Don yep. Gato. So you just yell out because you guys don't see him, do you? Check this door if you arrive. I'm, yeah, I'm going to talk to him like he's there because I know he's here somewhere. Hey, Les. Do you have true seeing all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you do. Oh, wait, he does? Yeah, I do. Okay. So I was right there, but when you started yelling my name, I ran over here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and make me visible again. Okay. Hold on. Do we, uh, we have to figure out a way that, um, give him uh, control also. Yeah. I was going to say, we have to figure out a way that he can still see you. Give him control also. Okay. Let's see if this works. I, real quick before we, before we do, I want to see if this works. Hold on a second. Can you see that? You can see, he can, can see, see you, it. right? You, yeah, I can see it, got him. Yeah. Okay, now. Uh, you, no, you also, you see two things. I haven't given it to him yet. Hold on. Oh. All right. Bardos, do you purple see circle. anything? Do you see a purple circle? Yep. All okay. right. So when I'm invisible, that's me. Okay. All right. So, so now, now that you're in part of it, you'll be able to see him when he goes invisible because you have true seeing up all the time. Okay. All right. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't like that. <laughs> In fact, I'm not going to tell yeah. you that. <laughs> I, I need to go shopping for a magic item, please. Yeah, the, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to Dresden. Come on, let's go. Um, I'm in the flame strikes. I can I can plane shift out and go shopping and come back. <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. So, um, oh, not right. that one. This this one over here, Don, is there's oh. a single door that doesn't have the maps that shift. It does. Yeah, the single That's the door. the only one I saw anyway. I'm assuming it's going to be a broom closet or something, but who knows? All right. Gato has trap spotter. If Gato comes within 10 feet of trap, you should... Oh, never mind. Okay. Uh, all right. So, Gato, what are you going to do with that door? So, you see that door instead of like the other doors that has these maps on them uh, that Bardos has pointed out. This one does not. It has a regular, like the same sort of like twist handle kind of thing uh, to get in, but um, but no map. Okay, so I'm going to check for traps. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Uh, there it is. Okay. Um, yeah. So you do not see anything that you recognize as a trap. Okay. Is it locked? Uh, well, it's it sort of, it doesn't, it doesn't have a locking mechanism on it per se, but it is one of these things where it's sort of like a pressure door almost where you, you have a wheel that you have to sort of like undo, you spin it over to one side and then there's like a, a, a safe door that you pull down when that wheel has been sort of like spun over to, to the, okay, so I'm going to spin the wheel and then I'm going to try to stand is in a safe area or? and Sorry? open that lever. Is it magical? The doors almost so to your eyes, almost everything about this labyrinth radiates uh, a great deal of magic. Uh, but I mean, the, 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 the turning wheel door, specifically. the lock itself does not e exhibit any more or less magic than the ambient area. Almost everything that you look at, though, uh, um, radiates a fair amount of abjuration magic. But the locks do not, uh, the, the handles on the doors or the doors themselves, for that matter, um, except for the maps. Do not do not seem to be inherently magical in and of themselves, other than other than the fact that they are part of an ever shifting labyrinth. That kind of magic. Um, the maps radiate a different kind of magic, divination magic. Divination, yeah. But the rest of it sort of radiates a sort of low level of abjuration magic all the time that you have to sort of see through. So, Gatto, you're going to step to the side and open the door. And open the door. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not a guard dog in there. <laughs> the door opens. And you look inside there and basically you see what looks to be a small room or maybe even a hallway that seems to go off to the east. Um, it's featureless. 
uh, generally speaking, does not, uh, the walls seem to be made generally of the same material, uh, un, it, which is unrecognizable as either wood or stone. It's not really stone. It's not really wood. It's something else. Um, but the walls seem to be made of that same material. Uh, there's no other sort of indicator. There's no creatures in here. There's nothing. It's not used for storage. It just looks like an empty hallway. You Great. go down a little bit of the ways, you see that it turns to the south. And again, yep. that particular thing, you, it goes off the map. But it proceeds for, you know, uh, at least as far as you can see, it proceeds south. Okay. But again, these these areas exhibit all of the same kind of characteristics as the walls and the stuff inside. In fact, they also exhibit the same sort of height. If you look up in this hallway, the ceiling is still 60 to 70 feet away. So it's very tall, relatively slim hallway. But other than that's unremarkable. The only thing about the welcome area that sort of is different is the fact that for one, it has some of these like this weird bush topiary. stuff. Yeah, it's like topiaries that exist here. And then in the middle oh. is a fountain with benches on it. And the fountain, as far as you know, it, it looks like it has clean water in it. But everything else looks pretty much the same. How are the walls left? Well, Bardos, I okay. opened the door. We walked down there. It looks like a long haul. Uh, what were you saying, uh, Jennifer? Are the walls all the way up to the 60 to 70 foot ceiling? The walls? Yeah, they go all the way up to the ceiling. There's no uh, open space at the top or anything like that. Does the book have any knowledge about the difference between double doors with the maps and any other kind of doors like this? Uh, it doesn't have any specific knowledge, although it talks in a general sense about this plane. Tell you what, give me another, another planar roll. Knowledge planes. 34. 34. Okay, hold on a second. Hey, you're the right man for the book. That's crazy. <laughs> well, I've got to find the spot. Hold on a second. So you do read up some various portions of the book and you do come to the come to a portion where it talks a little bit about this. And it says basically navigation inside the ivory labyrinth is difficult, uh, but not impossible. Uh, an experienced uh, person who know, has trailblazing or navigation skill or planar geography, uh, uh, as represented by a knowledge plane skill, can navigate the labyrinth to known locations, provided the traveler does so within the rules of the maze and doesn't attempt to cheat by flying over open spaces or flying over the labyrinth's walls. Um, the book does explain that teleportation really does offer the easiest method of travel, provided that you know the location you wish to visit, which is the bulk of the book describing various locations inside the greater ivory labyrinth. That's the name of this plane is essentially the ivory labyrinth. It's the name of it, but it's a plane wide labyrinth. Now the book has a lot of different locations located, including some fairly detailed descriptions that you as a magic user who has done teleport in the past uh, could use theoretically to, um, you know, as part of a teleport spell. Okay, so is, is there descriptions that detail locations that are very close to Baphomet's Tower that would be a good entry place for us into the city? Well, it does. So the only thing that it really talks about is the is the city of Blackburg, uh, which does contain Baphomet's Tower, but also as far, uh, uh, but does not say anything about the ineluctable <laughs> prison. So you're you're not sure that the prison is in the city um, because the... Um, <clears throat> The book doesn't discuss it. Uh, what it does talk about Blackburg, and it does give you a fair amount of description for teleporting to Blackburg. Uh, Blackburg is a tangled, densely packed city of wooden and stone buildings. Um, their facades are caked with soot and grime. The buildings themselves uh, make up the um, uh, uh, make up the twenty foot high. Uh, in this case, twenty foot high tall uh, walls of the maze, uh, and they leave alleys that are generally five or ten feet wide. The sky above is thick with smoke and fog. This is primarily it describes Blackburg as being primarily a town for demonic rituals and the veneration of Baphomet. Although it does contain demonic hatcheries which are breeding grounds for beasts and monsters and warehouses for various materials that are coveted by demons, including things like urns of blood, types of gemstones, larvae, uh, stuff like that. 
the ground in Blackburg is always somewhat damp with blood and ichor, and the air reeks of smoke and decay. This is not Elushinera, uh, a very different demonic city. It does go into, there are some other places that it talks about. Uh, none of them are the, uh, are the ineluctable prison where supposedly the Herald is being kept, but it does describe other regions of, of the... Um, of, of the ivory labyrinth i thought in the last game you talked about the intellectual prison as being part of the tower that was part of the original area that he was captured was that maybe i misread it's, that it's possible that i did mention that uh it's not in the book though okay it was in the module that i read what is it <laughs> let me make sure hold on a second you're doing yeah. that wrong mike <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always forget that these are from modules. One day I want to go back and actually read these. Uh, when we finish uh, this adventure path, I will make all these modules available to you. Um, all right. So uh, the Ivory Labyrinth, as, as you know, was originally designed as, by Asmodeus as a prison to contain Baphomet. But when Baphomet escaped, he took it with him into the abyss to make it his home. A fraction of that original prison is said to be hidden deep within the maze realm of the breathless fountains. Mm. This so-called this area uh, is of that original prison is called the ineluctable prison. And that is where Baphomet keeps his favorite prisoner. So it is not in Blackbird. The so prison breathless is fountains. If we ask. If we do try to make a deal with a demon, then we need to ask them about the breathless fountain, right? The breathless, uh, uh, now this might, sorry, it's the breathless mountains, not fountains. Sorry about that. I'm <laughs> stupid. Uh, th this is mentioned, however, in the book, breathless mountains are. Uh, so the breathless mountains are a maze that consists of winding mountain ledges, passes, bridges, and narrow tunnels that crisscross the slopes of a range of snow-choked mountains ranging between 25,000 and 45,000 feet high. Uh, just for uh, grins, let's see, how high is Everest? Mount Everest is, uh, give it to us in feet, you big douchebags, 29,000 feet. So in some cases, the mountains uh, in the Breathless Mountains are much higher than Everest. And the whole thing is the is part of the labyrinth. So the whole thing is a maze, I guess. Yeah. Well, the whole plane is part of the maze, right? So yeah, the passageways, no, uh, there are no walls that constrain this maze, but it is essentially consists of mountain ledges, passes, bridges, and narrow tunnels that go through these mountains. Uh, the passageways and ledges average about 15 feet wide, generally speaking. Uh, a person who falls from a ledge uh, takes a fair amount of falling damage and usually lands or about recovering from lands shifts into the ivory maze. Uh, the entire maze realm is constantly engulfed by extreme cold. In addition, the air here is very thin and constantly functions as high peak elevation. Hence the Everest analogy that I made earlier. But so yeah, so like, I guess I got, okay, I got to try to, to uh, see um, one of the scrolls I wanted to get was Greater Teleport, which gives us a lot better chance to teleport without errors. Yeah, I'm great. I've, I've, all those scrolls are fine. I didn't, I okay. didn't get a chance to email you back, but yeah. All right, so then I'm going to have that spell, and I would be able to use it. So with that description, can we use Greater Teleport to get everybody to that location or to something that details close to this prison that we're probably going to need to go to get to this guy that's the Herald? It's possible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, theoretically, I mean, the like I said in the book, the descriptions are pretty, um, they're pretty detailed. And your guess is that they were designed specifically to enable somebody to to use teleport to get to there. Uh, in this case, the Breathless Mountains, I mean, it's a big place. Uh, and the book itself doesn't make any mention of the ineluctable prison. So... Give me, give me a quick knowledge, another knowledge planes check. And I have a question when you're finished. Mm -hmm. So 39, so while you imagine that you can use the book and a greater teleport to get everybody to this place, this Breathless Mountains place, which the book, you know, is, is far from Blackbird. It's far from the city where Baphomet is. It is a large region. 
And the likelihood of you getting landing close to the, in, or, or, you know, uh, at the ineluctable prison. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of like saying, uh, it's sort of like the idea of doing a greater teleport to the Rockies and trying to hit Denver. Right. It's possible, but there's a lot of Rockies that aren't Denver. But it's the right direction, right? I mean, that's in theory, that's where this well, Herald is probably. A, yeah. According to this, the Herald is in the intellectual prison. According to the other information that you have, the intellectual prison is located somewhere in the Breathless Mountains. The book <clears throat> talks about this region of the Breathless Mountains and, and can provide enough enough detail that you feel confident that you can teleport everybody there. Um, but again, it's like, what if, you know, you're not teleporting to the prison, you're teleporting to the mountains. Um, and there are, you know, the, the, and it's a big place. Right. But that's all we have, right? I mean, without. It's all you have right now. Yeah. So you guys want to check this place out and see what's well, here the, first? The question I had is with the ring of planar focus, is there any way that if I used it or gave it to Bardos for him to use it, if that would be effective in allowing him to teleport? And the initial part of it says you have to tap it with a ring or, or tap the, the ring crystal. With, a, with a fork rod attuned to the spef- specific plane, but we're on the specific plane now. Right. So I don't know how the rest of it works. So I mean, when tapped, the crystal transforms into a rough topographical map of the, of the entire plane that stays there for one minute. You can manipulate the crystal to focus on a single specific location within the plane, although the topographical elements remain rough and the display is large. Only large or well-known features around a desired location. Uh, if the wearer has been to that location personally, she can focus the crystal for a full round. Otherwise, she can attempt a DC-15 knowledge check to focus on a location of her choice is a full round action. This location must be a public or well-known area, such as a public plaza in the common quarter of the city of Brass. Obscure locations or locations controlled by a divinity cannot be focused on. In all cases, the GM has a final say. In this case, I think the ineluctable prison would be an obscure location controlled by a divinity. This is controlled directly by Baphomet. Okay, so it's giving him this divine. ring and trying to help him attune in to where in the breathless mountains we need to be that in this case would not work you would you would be okay. able to get a topographical map of the breathless mountains right. which would ease the transition from the point of view of physical problems right so you're talking about you're talking about a set of mountains that are at minimum 25,000 feet above sea level right. um, and in some cases these peaks go up to 45,000 feet everest is is approaching 30,000 feet. So it was on the small side. Everest is on the small side of these mountains. So there are going to be problems. So this uh, basically said uh, the air here is very thin and uh, serves as high peak elevation. So real quick, I want to give you an idea of what that means. High peak elevation. We'll just do a quick Google there. Mountainous terrain. High peak uh, is considered to be more than 15,000. Well, it's going to be very cold. Uh, and low oxygen. And low oxygen. So let's let's take a quick peek here. High peak is more than fifteen thousand feet. The highest mountains exceed fifteen thousand feet in height. At these elevations, creatures are subject to both high altitude fatigue and altitude sickness, whether or not they're acclimat- acclimatized to high altitudes. Altitude sickness represents long-term oxygen deprivation and affects mental and physical ability scores. After each six-hour period, a character spends at an altitude over fifteen thousand feet, they must make a fortitude save or take one point of damage to all their ability scores. Well, this is like the death zone of Everest, right? Yeah, about. creatures acclimat- acclimatized to high altitude receive a plus four competence bonus on their saving throws to resist the effects of the sickness, but eventually even seasoned mountaineers must abandon these dangerous elevations. Well, let me ask you this. Would Storm be affected and would Bardos be affected? Bardos. Storm definitely would be affected. Not sickness. Uh, I mean, I'm immune to sickness, but I would still be. In this case, well, do you, I mean, do you respire? You don't sleep. Do you breathe? Yeah. Do you breathe oxygen? That's a big deal. Um, Let's have a look. Let's look at androids. In the survey set. Do they dream when they sleep? Uh, Sometimes. They dream about about cybernetic women. 
Uh, all right, hold on. I was thinking about Rutger Howard's monologue in, in uh, oh, yeah. Blade Runner. Yeah. Seen attack one. ships on fire. All right, uh, Andrew. I'm, always, I'm much more of a Leon man myself. Want to hear about my mother? <laughs> Let me tell you about. Let my me mother. tell you about your, my mother. Uh, all right. Um, all right. Exceptional Not subject s- to fatigue or exhaustion, immune to disease and sleep effects. But yeah, he would be. He would not be immune to oxygen deprivation. I'm, I'm pretty sure he breathes. So j- just as a, if if it comes that. I, my lay on hands can be treating sickness, so, so the target is no longer sickened. I don't know if it would mean they it would have to do it every time this check would come up. I'm assuming that's what it would have to be. But it might give we need us to some. find help, I think, because we're looking for a needle in a haystack, even if we can get to these mountains. Yeah, and... for the purposes of effect, androids count as both humanoids and <clears throat> constructs. Androids get a plus four racial bonus against all mind affecting, paralysis, poison, and stun. Uh, are not subject to fatigue or exhaustion and are immune to disease and sleep. Well, so that's an interesting sort of quality. Is altitude sickness considered a disease? It's, I would say no. No. Um, it represents, so altitude sickness represents long-term oxygen deprivation and effects ability scores. So in this case, yeah, I don't see anything that specifically says, <laughs> because I was, I'm looking for something like that you could, if you don't need oxygen, you would be able to, you would be immune to drowning, for example. And right. I don't, I don't, I don't see anything in this that says that you are. Although it does say that you have construct. Androids count as both humanoids and constructs. So let's take a look at construct traits really quick. But that, I think if if there's a humanoid trait versus a construct trait, you get the humanoid trait. So you get like the humanoid reading, trait. Yeah, because they're they're considered alive. They're just made out of synthetic components. Gotcha. Okay. So constructs do not breathe, eat, or sleep. But humanoids definitely do. So in this case, yeah, if you're thinking that it would have to conform to the humanoid port, androids breathe. Yeah. Okay. It, uh, sickness could count as a poison, though, because it's lack of oxygen. Uh, means you're breathing something else. Well, no, I mean the. I mean, it's not that so much that you're that you know the like. It's not that the mix of oxygen to nitrogen and carbon dioxide at those levels are are is skewed than it is at sea level. It's just that the air pressure is such that there's just not as many oxygen molecules in the in the in the matrix. Right. Po- both poison and disease have an external source fighting against the body. This is just a lack of stuff. Yeah, it's more like starvation. Mm, right. Tasha Yar wants to know if you're fully functional. <laughs> <laughs> and she does mean fully. Uh, um, it would be for her. <laughs> hey, oh. Um, <sighs> all right. Uh, hey, Les, somewhere I saw, I, and I think I might have read this uh, okay. when I was looking at the planes. Okay. Or at, at Baphomet's place, that there's there's a group of people in this maze that are basically set free by Baphomet and are uh, they're like toys that people use to hunt. Okay. But they're essentially hiding kind of, kind of like the uh, androids in, in, in the uh, Blade Runner movies are kind of. Oh, okay. Hiding in among pl- in plain sight kind of thing. Yeah. Right. So there there's communities in this maze of people that aren't affiliated with Baphomet is, is what I read. And right. Yeah. So, I mean, they would still be demons. Um, so it's not like people, it's not like humans because they would, uh, uh, to your point, if they're pretending to be Baphometians or hiding in plain sight, you know, <laughs> this is not a human. Play. So, so I to re- reiterate a little bit, this is definitely a different kind of place than Aleutian era and Nocticula's realm. Um, you know, obviously the, the abyss contains multitudes, but Baphomet runs a very different show here. Even Blackbird does not, Elusionaria and Nocticula has made Elusionaria to be sort of, for lack of a better term, far more welcoming to, uh, to yeah, and commerce driven um, to, to non-demons, um, whereas Baphomet, this is a demonic plane. Blackburg is a demonic city. He has no interest in commerce. He has no interest for of uh, you know primes or anybody. Nobody nobody would come here if they didn't have to. Um, so yeah, but the creatures is, that you're talking about would be demons. But there is a group that might want to atone for their sins. Maybe that we could theoretically, certainly, or certainly at the very least, would not be 
um, subjects of Baphomet. Right. Uh, or lo- well, loyal subjects. Of Certainly, if they live here, they're subjects of Baphomet. Loyalty is a different question. We just need to find somebody we can talk to that Lothar is not going to slap the shit out of us for talking to. You know, so I'm thinking maybe these guys. <laughs> distract it's Lothar. Certainly going to narrow it down around here. <laughs> hey, get the shiny bell. Look shiny. Ooh. <laughs> You're going to have to start treating Lothar like, uh, um, like a house cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, like the um, BA Baracus on A team. You know, whenever you guys yeah. have to make a deal with somebody, you know, Gatto Talk sneaks about. up behind him and saps him. <laughs> hey, will you just drink this milk real quick? It's uh... <laughs> They're going to start drugging you, dude. I pity Careful. the fools. I Keep don't like I... flying. Stop <laughs> making me flying. <laughs> Keep one eye open when you go to sleep, man. Jeez. All right, then. Yeah, I mean, you can, so, I mean, if you, I'm assuming you pull out the Ring of Planar. Uh, 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 well, I would, I would sort of concentrate on the Ring of Planar focus to see if there's any way that if I were to give it to Bardos, that he would be able to use it. Because obviously with the book, he can teleport into uh, several locations. Mm-hmm. That might get us closer to where we think we need to go based on the information that the book provides and that gives them some specifics to latch on to. Right. If I thought that the ring of planar focus would allow any sort of benefit to allow him to, to sort of even get a better idea, just to give us a better chance of, of teleporting in without having to deal with the mischances. Cause that's really what the ring of planar focus does. I it think elimin- I th- it eliminates the mischance, right? I think, and I think it would would do that. I mean, it, you know, in addition with the description, if you had essentially a a, a rough holographic topographical map, you right. could pinpoint, you could sort of acknowledge and say, "It's okay, that's where I want to go. This is the spot." Um, you know, while it would still be sort of, it wouldn't, it certainly wouldn't be a blind jump. Um, you would say, "This is the spot between the topical." topographical map and the description and the information from the yeah it would certainly is, would be is much there better civilization in this mountain so Somebody. i'll get i'll get together with bardos he's obviously a lot smarter than i am i'll show him the ring explain to him what it does mm-hmm. whether he needs to use it or whether i could use it in conjunction with him if it makes his ability to get us closer sort of faster then you know i'll be happy to either have him use it or use it with him whichever so to Gordon, to your question, the ring, the topographical ring does not see any creatures. It just sees a, I mean, it's essentially a, a, a topographical map. It's um, like Google Maps. Yeah, kind of. The book does describe that there are there are certainly demons that live in the Breathless Mountains. Typically, they are demons uh, that prefer cold weather. Uh, there are also cold related creatures. In one case, it talks about some Titanic, some Titanic uh, um, frigid uh, and it uses the term worm, W-Y-R-M. You're guessing that there are some, some uh, large white dragons that live in that region and, and patrol those areas. You're guessing that there are other creatures as well that maybe it doesn't mention. But yeah, it does say that there are creatures uh, that live there, primarily demons. And it does specifically mention a couple of these dragons that live there by name. But it's all wild. There's no like cities or towns. Or- There's no city there. Yeah, the whole the whole region consists of Mountain ledges, passes, bridges, uh, tunnels. It's it's still a maze, um, you know that uh, you know that that so so it's sort of compact. It's just that it's very cold and it's and it's very high altitude. So creatures that would be okay with that sort of thing tend to congregate here. Anybody have resist cold naturally? Nope. No. Not me. So I've got resist energy. That's a second level spell. That well, would do it. Coming on there. Can you get that too, Mike? Do you have resist energy? You're muted. Oh, let me check real quick. I don't know if there's anything better for there's like climate Typically control type spells. I've got several of those. Um, I actually do not have that. How do you get spells anyway? Have you ever talked about like, um, I mean, Bardo's taught you some things, right? Like you taught him. Have we tried to interact? Because me having it, you know, we you know he's a spontaneous caster. 
Right. So he has ability. Your, yours was all just learned. <clears throat> so you guys do talk about stuff, but you guys definitely go at, about it different ways. So there's really no teaching system that we could embrace together. I'm, I'm sure, you know, it's probably a lot of you teaching me techniques that hones, you know, his natural ability into what he can do. Um, Gordon? Yep. Actually, what you're really looking for is the first level spell Endure Elements. Hmm. And I definitely don't have that. Yeah, I don't have that either. Isn't cold one of the energy types? Wouldn't that work with... Uh, cold is an energy type, but that's more like taking cold damage. Right, yeah. So resist yeah, energy... short lived. The res resist energy is usually only lasts for minutes. Right, endure elements. I think is like a day. Yeah, resist uh, energy lasts for ten minutes per level. Endure. Did, that might be a clerical spell. Is it? Is it wizard too? It, do you uh, have endure? Cleric, it's it's cleric, sor druid, paladin, ranger, sorcerer. Yeah. So yeah, endure elements is twenty four hours. It basically, allows you to exist comfortably in conditions between minus fifty to one hundred and forty degrees Fahrenheit, without having to make fortitude saves. So that would work at this level. The problem is. When you uh, um, is going to be high altitude fatigue, um, so creatures are subject to high altitude fatigue. Creat um, basically, breathing the lack of the uh, uh, um, high altitude fatigue is extremely deadly to creatures that aren't used to it. Cold is extreme, and the lack of oxygen in the air can wear down even the most hardy of warriors. You can acclimatize. Creatures accustomed to high altitude generally fare better than lowlanders. Any creature with an environment entry that includes mountain is considered native. Characters can also acclimatize themselves by living at high altitudes for a month. Uh, and then you get a right, bonus. So eventually so, we acclimate, right? Right. Um, altitude sickness occurs even if you're acc acclimatized uh, at, at high peak. So this is even higher uh then thing. it's it's one thing to acclimatize to to something relatively simple uh what what's the elevation of denver denver's about what four thousand five thousand feet no, in the air yeah. i'm sorry it's five thousand two hundred eighty feet mile <laughs> high <laughs> oh, exactly. okay so that would be that would be considered it's low pass or low it doesn't peak. go any higher or lower that holds high. right <laughs> right Matt, do uh, you have sickness curing because i'm from denver no no so stereotypical <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have sickness curing out. I can I can cure sickness with a with a lay on hands, so okay, I can do it so, multiple times a day. Um, so that's one of my so. mercies. Less, yeah. Not that any of us have it, but yeah. If we did have a bottle of air, uh, that would supply us with oxygen. Theoretically, because the reason you get sick is because the atmosphere itself doesn't have much oxygen. Correct. The item appears to be a normal glass bottle. When taken into any airless environment, it retains air within it at all times, continually renewing. This means that a character can draw air out of the bottle to breathe. So, yes, a bottle of air would forge off altitude sickness. There's also a spell that I don't have called planar adaptation. Okay. Uh, grants you immunity to the harmful environmental effects of a particular plane of existence, including such hazards as toxicity, extreme temperatures, and lack of air. So I would think that would... Looks like we're going shopping. But <laughs> I don't have it. Yeah, it's a fifth level spell. What was the name of it called? Planar, and it only, uh, planar adaptation. And it only covers me, too. I can't cast it on anybody else. So it's pretty much worthless. What's, what's the bubble spell? Planar adaptation grants you... It's yeah, it's for your air, personal. a little bit air... Up and it's planar spread. adaptation is only one hour per level as well. Uh, the bubble spell. I'd look there's at a, it. It's there's a life bubble and there's an air bubble. Air bubble. Let's look at life bubble. You surround the touched creature with a constant and movable one inch shell of tolerable living conditions. It allows you to breathe freely, even underwater or in a vacuum as well as making them immune to harmful gases and vapors, including inhaled diseases. And additionally, the shell protects you from extremes of temperature. So yeah, that would work. And that goes two hours per level, which at 13 would be 26 hours, which means you could cast it every day. Air bubble is a first level spell, but it's only one minute a level. Life kind bubble is a fifth level cleric spell and a fifth level sorcerer or wizard spell. I had access to air bubble, but I didn't pick it. <clears throat>
So some options, but you don't necessarily have that stuff. Or, well, the other side of that coin is if you can get in and get out pretty quickly. Right. Uh, but that for that, you would need the precise location of the ineluctable prison. And, and let's be honest, we're talking about a frontal assault on Baphomet's personal prison <laughs> maze. <laughs> that shouldn't take too long. Well, and for life. <laughs> love it and for life bubble i could i could pray for that but it's going to be tomorrow like whenever yeah whenever we rest i can get life bubble because it's a fifth level Mm pre-spell up to one level so yeah that would cover us because that's yeah you could do 13 and it's i can do yeah creatures touch up to one a level two hours per level so 26 hours for everybody and Lothar so comes through. Yeah. The well, no, yeah. wait a second. It's not 26 hours for everybody. It says in the bottom, you can divide this duration up in any manage- manner you wish, not necessarily equally between up to one creature per mm-hmm. caster level. So what you have is 26 hours that you can spread around to everybody. Ah, to total to everyone. Right. So I could, I could memorize it multiple times. Could. Yeah. And then. Well, but it uh, sucks. It sucks away your fifth level spells, though. Yeah, it does. You should just probably trying to just... find something negative less. Come on, that's a win. And I have four, <laughs> I have four fifth level spells, so I could have that four times. Which, if I were doing 26 hours, let's see, 26 hours divided by how many of there are, how many of us are there? <laughs> it's 104 hours total divided by how many people you got? One, two, three, four. Oh, so we got familiars too. So, oh, yeah, you got creatures seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, I think. 11, 104 divided by 11. That's 11 and a half hours per casting. That's good. So doing that four times. I love math. Uh, Wait, what? No, it's not. If a druid leaves Chicago going 60 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got, so if you cast it four times, that's 104 total hours of planar protection that you can provide to the party at large. The party is built, uh, how many people did we say? Seven creatures or 11 creatures? Said eleven total, so that's eleven total. Nine and a half. If you Not yeah, if you divide, if you divide it, it's nine point four five. So do, well, I'll I'll just say ten hours a piece. Still good. But the problem is he he runs out of speed. I mean, you guys are gonna have to pop back out of there if you don't. Which we can do. I mean, we can we yeah. can teleport out if we have to. Yep. And then we'll have been there, and we can go right back where we were if need be. Or yeah. We each else. time we teleport, we're a little closer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So essentially, yeah, on a day, I mean, basically, you wake up in the morning. Uh, Lothar casts four sets of planar adaptation on everybody. That gives you 10 hours of, of go time in the mountains. You teleport to the mountains, do those 10 hours of whatever you do, then teleport out when the spell starts to wear off so that you guys don't end up. Bef- yeah, it would work. But it would limit your ability to, like, stay over. And yeah, well, okay. Maybe you know what? Maybe the other thing I'm forgetting is I have limited wish now. Ooh. How do you forget that? <laughs> well, because it's a new spell and I've never used it yet. <laughs> it's basically the same. It's a seventh level spell. Yes. So it lets me do anything that's sixth level as a wizard or fifth level as a cleric. Right. But but what I'm thinking is, is there some kind of divination spell that we could use? to try to locate or some kind of location spell to find the specific person. Cause we know the person we have identifying information. About the, Herald? The, the Herald. So, if so we can one of this, the things that they told you is that the, the, oh, that, that the, the Baph- prison doesn't let us get to Baphomet. It. So yeah. Baphomet's right. prison uh, precludes that you can't, you can't look inside. But uh, can we find the prison using those kind of spells? Even if it's not. No, probably not. Uh, I'd have to look, but my guess is no. One of the things that they they talk about again and again is how difficult this is to find. Like wandering around kind of find. Right. It's hidden by the master of this plane. There's like Noctikula on her plane, which she controls. Only more so in this case. So yeah, the likelihood of you being able to do a, a, a straight up Imago lens scry is, is probably not going to work. Oh would yeah, that that's a good idea too. I forgot I had that. <laughs> would, would all that be theoretically easier if we've already killed Baphomet? <laughs> you say that so offhandedly. And the other thing. So that's a great question. So uh, the my my first 
The answer is absolutely. It's the power of Baphomet that keeps the prison hidden, keeps the, probably the, the prison guards in line. Uh, frankly, if you guys kill Baphomet, there's a lot of awkward shit that's going to happen on this plane. <laughs> <laughs> because essentially this plane, I mean, belongs to him. And the a lot of the stuff that is, you know, I, I, he, could, he exercises a lot of control over, over what happens here. Um, if that control is subsequently removed, I mean, I mean, you can make the case. It's like, what happens if Baphomet, who controls the maze and essentially owns the maze, a magical maze that can, that covers the whole plane. What happens if he is destroyed permanently for real? Does the maze even exist anymore? I mean, there's a lot of, suddenly we get into a lot of theological questions. <laughs> which, well, there's no one better to answer those than Lord Flesh. <laughs> which uh, I will, I'll have to do some reading because I'm not 100% sure. But my guess is, it's just speaking as your DM, if you were to, to say, we're going to kill Baphomet first and then go try and find the Herald, it would probably be easier because the protections that Baphomet is putting mm. on the ineluctable prison would be gone. Um, and so Gord to Gordon and Lothar and, and Gordon and Chuck's point from earlier, the idea of being able to find the, the prison is if, if the protection agent that is keeping it hidden is suddenly removed, then there's nothing keeping it hidden. So Gordon and Chuck's plan to use the ring and the book and greater teleport would probably at that point work. If we're seriously going to try to take on Baphomet, then the time to do it is as soon as possible because he starts out weak and he's going to get stronger as time yeah. goes by. Yep. And yeah. And here's another thing. If we have to go into the mountains, <clears throat> it's a seventh level spell and it takes an hour to cast, but I can cast a uh, planar refuge, which basically creates a 50 foot radius that forces the realities of the prime material plane on other planes of existence. What the what now? <laughs> the spell mean, forces it on other. This spell enforces the rules of the material plane on other planes of existence. Upon, upon casting this spell on yeah. another plane, wow. a spherical pocket of wilderness terrain forms around the designated point. The affected area defies the local climate and planar traits, suppressing oh. any harmful environmental effects such as toxicity extreme temperatures or lack of air so we walk mm -hmm. around like this okay and it, and it lasts <laughs> one day per level it lasts 13 days every time i cast it well, oh, that would, what's That's the area of effect it's a 50 foot 50 radius. foot radius so it's, it's a small camp basically for us yeah. well a reasonable size camp That's the okay. area also becomes lush with edible plants whose appearance <laughs> taste and smell bear characteristics distinct to the environment on a negative dominant plane for example the print the plant grow ghastly white leaves and taste bitter. Though planar refuge can be cast on any plane of existence other than the material plane, it requires a body of solid matter at least as large as its area to function. Yeah, you need to put it on something. You can't put it on like in the middle of the air. Right, so yeah. you need it on ground. Right. So basically, if we went up into the mountains, yep. into this mountain, if that's where we had to go, then with an hour casting time, so an hour ceremony, I could designate a 50 foot radius that we could then teleport back to that for 13 days mimics the prime material plane. Does That's it, awesome. does it move with you? No, it, it, the, the idea, it's just a spot. Right in that spot. Yeah, the it's idea this. on this seems to be that it stays where it is. Okay. If it moved with you, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. That would, that would break some things. Yeah. yeah. Flash art gets mean, a lot of grief for just talking from one lesser demon and, Lothar's over here reshaping reality like Thanos, and everybody's like, no, oh, we're cool with that. Yes, but I'm not making deals with Obeo, demons while yeah. I'm doing it. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> well, this is a very interesting spell, and I think, cool. I think it will do exactly, Chuck, what you're envisioning that it will do. It will create a, and especially okay. as a priest of Arastal, you're creating basically a lush grove in the middle of these high mountains. Right, right, for a 50-foot radius that lasts yeah. for 13 days. Well, 50-foot so we, radius is basically a 100-foot diameter circle. Oh, yeah. So if we needed to get somewhere where we would be safe and then go from there, teleport back or move back, whichever, as we're going along, then mm -hmm. this creates something that lasts for 13 days. It's a home base. And, and, exactly. And if we move beyond sort of what's reasonable, 
with a one hour casting time and a seventh level spell, I can do it again. I think we're well beyond what's reasonable at this point. <laughs> well, the other thing is, here's, here's the other thing. Okay. I, can, I can create a demi plane. So we can stay somewhere until it becomes uncomfortable. And then we plane shift to my demi plane and hang out there, untouchable. What spell does that? What is uh, up with Lothar? He is like dominating the game. Like we don't, we're just like watchers. Create any awesome. plane lesser. It's a free spell of seventh level. Thanos. It so, is. Well, well, so no, but this, oh, but this happened. So everybody, you know, everybody jokes about clerics, um, but um, but cleric and clerics are essentially heal bots up into about tenth level. And then suddenly clerics turn into crazy ass motherfuckers for exactly this sort of reason. These spells are are insane and no one else has access to them but clerics. Um, yeah. Once a cleric gets seventh level spells, really, I mean, six is not world breaking, but seventh level spells, one of them, like I said, it's create demi plane. So I'm reading this. So uh, and this lasts for one day per level two. The demi plane is only three 10 foot cubes. Oh, per level. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you create a small, finite demi plane. Uh, oh, you. OK, uh, you must be on the astral, ethereal or a plane that has access to one of those planes, such as the prime material or any other plane to cast yeah. this spell. When you cast the spell, you decide whether the demi plane will be within the astral, ethereal. It can be filled with air or water. The plane is generally flat and featureless, such as earth, walls, and ceiling, blah, blah, blah. There are no native creatures. But yeah, I mean, essentially, you're creating a, uh, like the white room in the Matrix. Yeah, he's creating his own. A loading room or loadout uh, room. His own yeah. demi plane of existence. Yep. We need to vote bonus points for our team. Something to point out. And for Bardos, uh, the plane cannot be dispelled, but a creature on the plane can destroy it using a limited wish. Mm. There you go. Okay. So that'll be fun. So well, don't piss me off. <laughs> and at, and if I if I decide to at some point, I can use permanency to make the plane permanent. Wow. Yep. Do you have permanency? I, I do not. And I okay. would not. I would not at this point. But that's beside the point. I mean, effectively, as we go up in level, and basically with the, the cooperation of my buddy Vardos. I could create a relatively large demi plane that mimics a forest, make it permanent, and then that would be where I'd live. We'd lose Farina and she'd never see us again. And that would be maybe where Farina lived. And I'm good with that. Because every now and again, I'd wave at her in the trees and then I'd go back and do my own priestly thing, planting mm -hmm. trees and planting cabbage and all that kind of stuff. But yes, we'll not do that now because you may lose two of us if, if I have that. But so I guess what I'm getting at is there are some really just sort of world breaking pre spells at that level mm -hmm. that that we could use to do this if we wanted to do something other than try to go after Baphomet first. Well, well yeah. Again, the, the question is, if you guys are serious about going out, I mean, Bartos didn't really consider that seriously, the, taking down a demon prince is just not something that he thinks he's capable of. Well, but his see, intellect point, just says that's not going to happen. But yeah, if you guys really want to try that. At this point, we're going after a demon prince. who's already basically had his dick kicked in the dirt. Yep. He's not at full power. He's vulnerable. He's vulnerable. Now he is. And he's hiding. For how so, long, though? How, is, right. how long is he vulnerable? A year, a, year. And a, a year and a day. Yeah, for a year and a day. So, so that if means we, he's, if we, if we can go like find him now. 35 AC instead of plus 60 AC? <laughs> well, maybe so, but have you seen what Fletcher rolls? Yeah, Sweet yeah. mother of God. Fletcher really likes the idea of trying to kill a demon. Yes, I'm sure Fletcher does. <laughs> but I guess what I'm saying is if we're going to try to do it, the next year and a day is it, right? That's when he's weak. That's when he's vulnerable. And that's really what we've been asked to do. Les, you should take a, a vacation break from DMing and let Bob DeRue step in here for a, just a session. Just oh to kind of, <laughs> <laughs> you know, mix things up a little bit. I would never do that to you guys. It, it would not work because we would not <laughs> have what we have. Oh. Are Bob's games fun to play? Is it just fun just to live through the he night? It's fun to live. 
It's fun I, to live. I stopped playing D and D because of him. And yeah, well, I was in <laughs> a lot of people have. Yeah, a lot of people have. I stopped for several years because when Tom Bowman stopped DMing and Bob took over, I made a couple awesome characters that I loved, and Bob killed them within like two sessions. And I was just uh, like, "This isn't campaign. fun." I mean, you know, whatever Bob's death campaign, but it's not fun to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> lucky lucky alert kid man he made it three sessions i've spent a lot of time on that i mean it, he was a uh, a bongo playing half orc scald it was going to be awesome and uh he got thrown into the ocean during a storm. session one yeah well not <laughs> session one but session three session he made three. it to session three hey, last make a character that you like that you plan on keeping unless the party's ninth level or higher yeah, exactly and and then you have to become knighted or start running a church he loves okay. politics yeah. Um, so you don't adventure anymore. You just do kingdom building. Yep. Uh, that's yeah. Bob's way of taking characters out of the, out of the game, basically. And, and just, just to put the stamp down, just to, just to put my mark on it, go pee in the corner. When this campaign is over and we start our next one, I want to be the half drow, half succubus child <laughs> of Illandar. <laughs> Of who? Of Illandar and Arushale. All right. Illandar and Arushale. I've got your dibs. GM. I've got oh, dibs on that character. Uh, that's I'm, awesome I'm approving job. that right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, 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 auto approved. <laughs> a, I'm a legacy. I, I get right in. <laughs> I'm going to come back as a plain caravan guard. <laughs> Another one? All your characters are fair caravan guards. Ooh. Hey, Les? Yeah. Read the, read the last post I sent you. Uh... And you didn't answer my question, guys. Okay. I'm about to. All right. So, <laughs> as, there's no answer so, uh, I, so, um, so Fletcher says, you know, did we search the bodies or did Gatto search and take everything good already? Gatto is actually over by the body of Odinka. And uh, and doesn't say anything. Well, now, uh, I asked which, out loud earlier, if you read up, is it OK if I take these swords? No one said anything. Well, they're not. So let me re no rephrase. They're not all swords. If you look at Odinka, she's got a different. They're different kinds of weapons. Um, spear and axe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, so, so there, there's one's a flail, there's a couple of swords, one's a weird battle axe, one's a spear. Um, so they're different kinds of weapons, but they all have the same sort of qualities that... Uh, um, you know, that I talked about earlier. Um, basically, Gatto says, do you guys want any of these? And he begins, you know, nobody says anything. No he, begins putting anything. Them, he begins putting the weapons in his bag. At which point Fletcher says, Gatto uh, has not searched the welcome demons uh, and looks over and Fletcher says, what did you find? Are those cool? And at which point you see Gatto begin to sort of change. And, you know, the bag drops to the ground and he, you know, all of a sudden different sets of arms come out. He increases in size and suddenly Gatto looks like Odinka and he has the weapons in his hands and he's waving them around. What happens Ooh. next, Gatto? Now, where's where's Bardos? Uh, Bardos, I think I, I am assuming that everybody kind of got over here. Did, by did the Bardos come outside mountain. that hall? Yeah, I'm here. Marina's You're gonna still in that out. hall. I don't Marina's think he would still out. be in there because everybody's been talking about stuff and Lothar Wait, and Bardos Marina, have been consulting on planar stuff. I think everybody's Marina, in the room, yeah. probably over by the fountain or using these things as to to look at the book and stuff like that. Freena's yelling something out. What was that, Freena? Put those down, Gatto. <laughs> well, Bardos is immediately doing the tech magic because he wants to know if this is... Illusion or transformation. Well, since you have Bardos, I just sent you something. You have true seeing, right? Yes. All right. Uh, Gatto, tell him what true seeing shows him. Or not tell him, but... I, I just did. Okay. That's why I was looking for him. Got it. Okay. Got it. You hear this creature in Gatto's voice saying, um, I was going to take these weapons and use them because I have the ability to mimic this creature. In appearance, not in power or anything like that, but uh, that might be useful. What? Once again, you're avoiding answering my question, yeah, which I, I don't understand. <laughs> talk fast, because Storm was about to pounce on you. Well, I did talk fast. <laughs> real slap. Bardos, if anyone attacks me, you can back me up on this. 
Not, yeah. not that you the will, but you I could. Asked was, are they cool swords? Um, I don't know. Let let the magic user detect magic on them. They radiate uh, a moderate amount of magic. Nothing, nothing massively special. Okay. How evil are they? Detect and evil. What else did you find when you searched her? Well, they do radiate. So, to your point, Flashheart, they do radiate a uh, a fair amount of unholiness. Yeah. Of course, everything here does. <laughs> Oh, although they don't bother me. <laughs> oh, look, it's time for Holy Word. <laughs> Is this another mub in the making? Are you like on your way to chaotic evil or lawful evil? No, no, no. <laughs> First atonement. It doesn't, it doesn't harm neutral characters. <laughs> they don't harm neutral characters, yeah. Oh, wait, what did I read about Holy Word? Yeah, kills, paralyzes, blinds, or deafens non-good subjects. So I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> holster in that gun um all right so a lot of stuff talked about here so one we've got you've got uh, a couple of, if you guys if you guys search the welcome demons you don't find anything really in the way of money either you do find two unused scrolls one on each of them that do contain teleport spells are they standard or greater they look to be standards well, I wouldn't know that. Yeah, it would be a Bardos question. I mean, Bardos, yeah. Bardos, I'm sure you show them to Bardos. And Bardos was like, these are standards. These are not as complex. Um, they generally seem to be of limited range. Your guess is that it's exactly what you suspected, that these demons, because they don't have an innate teleportability, need to have some sort of method to get back to where they ever come from or whatever you know that they do. Um, they certainly don't seem to live here. Um, there's no lair there's no nests there's no anything you're not kind of you're kind of not like sure how this works um but if you take the moment to examine actually give me a knowledge arcana or a spellcraft check as you examine these go bardos there you go buddy 34 knowledge arcana all right your guess based on the, the way these read is that these will take these auto take the kaloxi demons back to blackberg um, which you guess there may be some sort of central location where welcome demons come from or that may be where they live. <clears throat> no return ticket. Um, I'm going to ask again out loud. Does anyone mind if I keep these weapons? Are you still look, do you still look like Odinka? I'll, I'll <laughs> change back to Gato. Okay. That, um, and I'll, actually, say I'll answer your question when you answer mine. <laughs> okay. Just, just as a note, so, this could be. So very your question was, to... are they any good, right? No, that one you answered, but the other question was, what did you find when you searched Odika? I didn't really search her. I just looked at the weapons. Okay. Uh, as so we know, the paladin doesn't her. care unless it's something that he can use ever about what anything. It's, but you guys divvied yeah, up, however. But I would say this camouflage could be very useful to our uh, to our. Uh, our quest here. Sure. Just don't make deals with me while I'm in that form. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feeling we're not supposed to make deals with you anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask the paladin if he's ha if he has detected evil. Oh, I, I did. I you know oh, I, I, I detect evil on uh, on Gato on every every half hour. Or so yeah, yeah. There's not a time when he doesn't. <laughs> and yeah, what was, you can't. What, I, yeah, I will. I will detect evil. I'll refresh my detect evil on the on Gato. And what was the result? You see a black yes. orb. You don't detect anything because I have uh, a special ring that you guys made for me. <laughs> So, yeah, so I think that's one thing that 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 Flash Art ought, would realize if he's doing periodic detect evils, there is something blocking your ability to determine yeah. dis distinctly what uh, if, if you remember if what we're in town, we gave him we we gave him the one ring to to will soon rule us all. So <laughs> I'm sure it's all quite innocent. So I'll ask him, what are you up to? What am I up to? Nothing yes. different. Um, I have this ability to, uh, it's a greater disguise spell and I can oh. uh, even disguise myself as a demon twice my size. Okay. She's twice my size. Um, now the disguise really doesn't give me all these weapons or anything like that, but if I have them, I can use those as props for this, um, for it to be okay. really effective. I would like to know if any of you guys have the spell tongues that you can cast on me because I do not speak. Uh, abyssal. Yeah, I, 
almost bought that, but I didn't. I only had so much money. I didn't. Oh, I thought that. you were talking about his story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, tongues. The, the tongue scroll. I almost got the tongue scroll, but I ended up not getting it. Okay. So what? Wait. What spell is that? Is that uh, tongues? Tongues. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just called tongues. Well, it's a it's it's a clerical spell at fourth level that I could get if I were to rest. I I don't have it memorized now. Okay. Well, I don't need it right now or anything like that. But um, this is the first chance I've really had to just kind of like use this ability and show you guys. And you should probably yeah. let us know you're going to do it first. Yeah, I was. I, I almost <laughs> unleashed Holy Spirit. I I made sure that Bardos was within sight because Bardos can see right through this. Well, I can't, and I almost unleashed Holy Smite. I'm just saying, well, it's... <laughs> let your priest know when you're okay. about to do something yeah. sketchy. Especially which, at yeah. this point, I should understand you're always about to do something sketchy. Yeah, yeah it kind of comes with the territory. Tell you what. Yeah, you're about six seconds from having the storm really slap you. Like <laughs> I, I, I for one see this as a win as this greater disguise is very useful but yes Bar Bardo maybe, says I trust maybe we should you, develop Cato. some sort of I trust maybe should, you maybe we should develop some sort of safe word you know when you're well, I'll tell you what no 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 here's this here's this I'll tell you what whenever I use a disguise to disguise myself um I will have either a hat or a helmet or a hairpin or something that looks like an armadillo yeah Right, because yeah, you know, he wears an armadillo on his head. Right. In the heat of battle, we're definitely going to take the time to look for a hat pin. Well, I won't do it in the heat of battle and attack you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you guys uh, forget every once in a while, Ned, you can see Ned and Gatto talking to each other. So. Um, if, if in the heat of battle, I say, I'm just a caravan guard, you'll know it's me. <laughs> there we go. Oh, what's, what's, what's the line from Con Air? There are two people I trust. One of them's me. And the other, other ancient. one, other ancient. <laughs> oh, Cameron Poe, what a what a what a glorious oh. poet he was. Put the bunny back in the box. Wait, why didn't she just put the bunny back in the box? Oh, I love that movie. I love Cyrus the Virus so, so much. So it's an ability that might come in handy. Um, the 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 weapons would just be props, because yeah, you know. I'm not trained to fight with. Yeah, so on. obviously, disguise, uh, disguise self or whatever the disguise ability is would not give you the ability to wield six weapons at once. Right, right. <laughs> Which is essentially what Marilyn's do. So, is there a benefit to having the swords versus just using the illusion and making the swords look like they're there? I mean, how does that? Well, is this the illusion? I mean, the disguise illusion does not include weaponry. Uh, right, he can't get me. Yeah, it's basically he changes his personal form, I mean, I can, clothing, and stuff like that. I can change my sword that I have to look like a staff, but I can't create additional mm. things. I could, I guess, I could make my hand look like a sword, but if you look closely, it would be, you know, that's not a separate thing; it's part of him. Yeah, which might be freakier, frankly. Yeah, so it might be easier on this plane to just do a minotaur and do, and then you could just change your sword to an axe and. Could be. I could do a minotaur. The only question I have is, can we get a, a wizard, Bardos, to check the weapons to make sure they're not going to adversely affect Gato? At least do that. Because at this point, we've seen cursed swords. We've seen curses that made our party members maybe even more effective, but much more dangerous to us. Much more so dangerous. It's, it's a question of, I don't care. As as your your sort of priest, I don't have a problem with him carrying these weapons around so that he can use this 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 illusion ability as long as I know the weapons aren't going to hurt him or cause him to go to evil or curse him or any of the rest of that. If that's good, I'm good with what Gato's. So doing. I'm I'm fine with you guys checking it out. I mean, I I think Gato, like I just said, if you wanted to do something like that in this plane, especially. Doing a minotaur would be a much simpler, rather than carrying six weapons around that you can't use all the time. Well, I'm I, I'm gonna put them in my bag. I'm not gonna walk around with six weapons out or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, yeah, but she's obviously some sort of boss, not necessarily big boss, but right. She obviously is a boss of of these sort of sub demon types. So, yeah, if I he think can it's useful if he can mimic that safely. Well, the minotaurs are gonna be bosses here too. I mean, there's gonna be. 
Baff them at own creatures. God knows what Les is going to come up with, but it's not well, going to be pretty. Right? <laughs> well, I can I can mimic either and or not. Well, I can't do both at the same time, but this just gives us options if I take these with with us. Yeah, except Les just said that some of them are unholy, and even All if it doesn't affect oh, you, yeah, that's right. <laughs> then so yeah, Flash Art will tell you as he does detect evil that these weapons have the unholy. Uh, um, I guess what's the, the ability unholy yeah, uh, imbuement. So an unholy weapon uh, makes the weapon evil aligned and bypasses uh, damage reduction for evil uh, aligned weapons. It deals an extra 2d6 of damage against creatures of good alignment. Uh, and if somebody who is good tries to wield it in combat, it bestows a permanent negative level on them. Um, <laughs> and it remains in hand and disappears when the weapon is no longer wielded. So um so I guess it doesn't really bother. So the only harm is if God were to use it against one of you and you were good, I would get 2d6 in addition to my normal weapon damage, right? Right. God is not stupid. <laughs> he knows that there's no way he would survive it's a bold half a round if he tried anything like that. He has no desire to do that in the first place. I guess having some unholy weapons with us is going to help the disguise of the... Uh... That's bonus. Non detectable alignment. <laughs> That's bonus. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll take the ring okay. off. Wait, are we I'll... sensing? Are we sensing this... Gato's motive or, or Don's motive? So uh, is this does Gato's story sound suspiciously like the stories that I tell from demons who are trying to desperately stay alive and are trying to <laughs> cut a deal? I'm just, just, I'm just asking questions here. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, you see me take off my mother's ring, okay? And I say, Flash Art, go ahead and, and scan me. Detect evil. I am not evil, but he you is, can get through. He is not evil. And the block that was, has historically been there is now gone. Okay. I put the ring back on. <laughs> hey, I'm not walking around without it. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to ask Otto to put those weapons away for now. Yeah, okay. I put them in my bag. Yeah, I think it makes sense to have them. I think they, it makes sense as having this. Yeah, they, they make me a little bit nauseous, but I understand what you're doing. Yeah. We can't be walking around in other planes and you know and, and uh, trying to make everything good as we go along, right? We gotta we gotta work with what we got in the terrain we're in. Okay, as the paladin who just wanted to make a deal with the demon, shush. <laughs> I, I just wanted directions, Thanos. Relax. As, as Gatto. Who, oddly enough, I actually now trust. <laughs> oddly please, enough. Please put those away. I appreciate what you're doing. I, I do appreciate what you're doing. but No problem. They are away. Then, Plus, can we put in the Paladin book? They should not say, relax. <laughs> <laughs> Flash we absolutely. is not a proper argument. <laughs> also, they, don't, they shouldn't wring their hands together like Jack Mark. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but on the other side of it, once once uh, Lothar gets the glove with all the crystals in it, y'all are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm putting uh, does saying relax invalidate any of the aforementioned prohibitions? No. <laughs> Guys, relax, have an edible. You're and, on and, plane. and if after watching roll with it. if after watching the Marvel movies with Thanos, you kind of agree with Thanos, does is that problematic? No, no, and no. I, 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 I hope no, I not just, because I, I do just, too. <laughs> okay, I, I just, just impressed, asking. I just impressed that you can like basically shape reality to your whim on a on a on a, on basically an enemy plane. I yeah. posed the theoretical uh, before you came at me telling me I was acting like Thanos. So I just I just want to let you know that we're up to 21 pages on this book. I'm just gonna I'm just saying we're up to 20. I just just did 20 and 21 pages uh, I, in the uh, Can the Paladin do that book? I yeah. still I still envision a goofus and gallant thing, you know. Uh, <laughs> so you guys, want, you guys want to take a quick look? Yeah, let's see it. Let's from here. We, we need to we're basically with with Bardos's expertise. What do we need to do? And uh, well, Bottles is a scout. We got we got a disguised master, or you know, a, a 
master disguise. More like, okay, let's let's see, let's go right. to the let's go to the vi the video here. Are pounds allowed to do that? All right, making deals with demons or devils? No. No. Uh, selling defeated enemies into slavery? No. <laughs> uh, cannibalism? No. I was uh, just asking. <laughs> making dead enemies into human centipede? <laughs> No, no. I, I don't recall. I don't recall this. <laughs> I don't recall this. <laughs> Keeping a found wallet? No. Uh, putting a lit torch to someone's genitals? No. Uh, use an evil potion to magically pull out a guy's heart? No. Take advice from Gatto on ethical dilemmas? No. <laughs> Keep extorted money to use as tips? No. <laughs> Give drows a trapped box as a test of integrity? No. no. Use huge ancient living demon creature as summer home. No. <laughs> Use dretch body holding cleric spinet as spirit as cannon fodder for attack on living demon house so that after the cleric gets killed, defeating the demon living in the demon house, we can then raise him and call it a victory twofer. Oh. No. <laughs> raise rates on extortion victims. No. I don't recall uh, that one. Raise rates on extortion victims if we call it proactive tithing. No. Um, <laughs> keep an iron bound book of significant evil and maybe sell it to another really evil demon. No. Uh, use drow slaves as live bait to distract a hungry dragon while we make our escape. No. Hey, that was a sound plan. Come on. <laughs> Iomidae and baptism. <laughs> Iomidae and baptize a behind the couch shitter. No. All right. Uh, <laughs> expense accept expensive gifts from demon lords. Wait, wait, uh, well, wait. that's hang okay. <laughs> hang, on. hang on, hang on, hang on. We need to back up to the one before that. Okay. Because at this that's Yardley. Point, wait, at this oh, point, okay. if he can do an atonement on Yardley, Yardley's not evil, and Yardley decides to to join the lawful good crew, yep. that <laughs> becomes possible. I, that, be, that does cool. become possible. But, but, so maybe. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks to the the gift that the the martyr or the the, the <laughs> whatever she was gave us all, that one becomes possible provided Yardley. Uh, no, with an Yardley said he'd come as long as I could bring his family. And I said, "Cool." So Les was checking it out for me. Not sure where we, let, where we left off on. I don't have enough atonements for all of Yardley's. Family. <laughs> well, he's still he's sort of the patriarch of that family. So theoretically, yeah. if he legitimately accepted atonement from Flashheart and became, he would become lawful good. Yardley would become lawful good. Now, I don't know necessarily that lawful goodness precludes you from shooting behind the couch, but it certainly yeah. sets up some other things. Well, um, if, if there is a law against yeah, shooting behind, behind the couch, the couch yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Uh, and then the latest anathema. that's true the latest ones murder suicide atonement pact no uh and does saying relax and validate any of the <laughs> aforementioned prohibitions no so there we go those are so far so far that's the book this, this is a great, this is gonna be a bestseller i can feel it <laughs> alden's guide that's awesome. to uh to navigating the planes. No, the <laughs> Captain Obvious's Paladin Guide is what that would end up being. Uh, All right, so a lot. So we're really close to eleven o'clock, but we've got a lot of interesting questions here that are going to require resolution. You guys are still here at the welcome wagon, and at some point, at the welcome space, and at some point, somebody else is going to teleport out here to man the space. One assumes at their end of shift. However, that works here. Right. Um, you do have a couple of teleport scrolls that will that you that Bardos has pretty much determined will take you to Blackburg, the city, which is the primary city in this plane and the home of Baphomet's tower. Fletcher brought up the point of if we kill Baphomet right away, does that ease the possibility of us being able to rescue the Herald? And generally speaking, the uh, I believe that the general consensus was that it probably does. However, Bardos did make what I think is a salient point in that killing a demon prince is never really a walk in the park um, and may, and may be problematic from a strategic sense. Um, you've also determined that the, uh, so by comparing various types of information sources that you use, you've determined that the intellectual prison does exist in the breathless mountains. However, there are some environmental factors there that will need to be accommodated. Now it sounds like that Bardos's spell list after some rest, could potentially and potentially easily accommodate those. I mean, it sounded like there was several different options that could be allocated, including uh, planar adaptation. Uh, well, what was what the one? Was 
uh, uh, Bardo says planar adaptation. Oh, Lothar. Uh, Lothar does, not me. Oh, Lothar does. Okay, so I was right. Uh, Lothar has, could do planar adaptation. There's the, uh, he can also set up a planar space of, uh, like, like it can use as a base of operations that lasts for a couple of weeks. He could also create demi planes that would provide a safety and sucker in the case of, uh, you know, things went wrong. So there are a lot of options there um, for going into the thing. The problem is that despite the different sources that you were able to, and you still can't really pinpoint at this point, the location of the prison where you could go straight there and sort of bypass. You still need more information. Um, and it's Baphomet. Your guess is that Baphomet's power, since this is his favorite prison and he doesn't want people to know where it is, that it's Baphomet's specific power that is hiding it from you from a scrying standpoint or a location standpoint. Um, does that cover everything? Yeah, I, th I think at this point, after considering all of it, I think Lothar is going to side with Fletcher. In the point of going to kill Baphomet first? In the point of going after Baphomet first and, and rescuing the prisoner second. How is that? Is Baphomet even, wasn't even our primary mission, I thought. I was, I was resident. It was first. part of it. Um, well, there, you it's kind of both, right? Nocticula sent us to execute the weakened Baphomet. Right. Iomide sent us to rescue her herald. Well, actually, right. Iomide's uh, what Avatar. I, what? Avatar. There's a word for it, and I can't think of it what it is, Saint. but it's yeah, Iomide Saint. Avatar, Saint. Saint. Her, did. Yeah, her issue was go rescue the herald or go rescue uh, Iomide's voice. Well, she, or, she also said that killing Baphomet would be a good thing. Well, yes, but uh, Nocticula's direction was kill Baphomet <clears> because he's weakened. So you've made a deal with not not to yes, so look who's <laughs> prioritizing Naticula. Uh, no. Atonement. Give him an atonement quick. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I just and, thought she told you something and you said you'd do it. And Sounds like no. a deal to me. <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me. Well, I mean, from a point of view, I, and to and to come to Lothar's defense here, yeah, I, I mean, it, the argument could be made that he is performing a he was fulfilling a request that nocticula made of him but i'm, I'm thinking you know from lothar's point of view as a as, as a law of a powerful lawful good priest of an old god an old good god the idea the possibility of taking out a major demon prince has got to be appealing to him um and frankly it's got to be appealing to him in a way that his i'm sure his deity would absolutely approve of this, you know, the idea. Of, I mean, so the thing about deities, especially greater deities, is they tend to be freaking alien as hell. Um, it's very hard to sort of ascribe mortal motives to some of the deities, right? They exist on a different level of, of, of magical philosophy uh, and, and, and that kind of stuff. So they, they have alignments and they do certain things, but... Um, you know, they, they, they're essentially doing, for the most part, proceeding on jobs and desires and, and, and projects of their own, which can be com com considered completely alien to what a, a normal human. You guys are still, I mean, despite your power, are still, you know, normal, you know, normal people. Well, um, and I can make it much easier than that. It, yeah. it doesn't, what Nocticula wants to me is irrelevant. But the, the, effectively, the deity of our paladin said that, that she wanted her herald back. Mm -hmm. Strategically, from what we've all discussed and what Bardos, like I said, the smartest thing I've ever seen on the planet, has said, is that if we kill the demon first, it, it makes it easier to find where we need to go to complete the mission that Iomide tasked us with, which we all agreed to based on whatever it is our 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 connection to each other our our group yeah. ethic I'm, whatever that makes sense what you're saying i'm on board with this i would say that if we see that it's an unsurmountable task at this moment for one reason or another then we maybe uh, reevaluate but otherwise yeah let's do it we have been all about doing unsurmountable tasks since we got together. <laughs> and I, I mean that's legit yeah i mean uh, there's a lot of unsurmountable tasks that have been done here we've always like got this, the show like, you're like, okay, I'm looking at the, at the book today. Maybe we can prioritize killing this demon lord in his own plane, and then we go get the, the, the hostage. All well, right, and it's, yeah. It seems to I'll be that, that prioritizing attacking 
a weakened demon prince, which doesn't mean weak, weakened demon prince, mm-hmm. gives us a better chance at being able to find where we need to go to, to uh, release the, the voice or the herald or whatever it is of Iomade. If that's the general consensus, then Farina's going to fall right in line with that and thinking, because that means she might get home sooner. Or this whole thing will end in a bloody bed death bath, and that's fine too. It'll be over one way or the other. <laughs> and at, at some spirit. point, at some point during this, if we run into trouble, I might decide to create a demi plane, and me and Frina go off and play in the woods. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking that uh, yes. Frina, Frina's less of an elf than more of a Viking these days. She's like, let's let it all end in blood and fire. No, she under, she understands uh, herbs and <laughs> and edibles. Yeah, she's tired of this. This is a long time away. This character was not designed for this plane, that's for sure. Well, and and that's the other thing. the 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 uh, the priest of Arastal. Arastal is not a, a crusader god. Mm. He got caught up in this while going to his coronation, basically, but. All he wants is to go live on a farm somewhere. And he's already made a promise to whatever de- whatever whatever that that person deceased thing was that he would never live in a city. So Oh right, the um the uh the the cult not cult but like the the whack job priestess of uh of Arastal. Yeah. That drove uh that drove uh Hesker that nuts. drove Hesker insane. Yeah. So, I mean, they're kind of on the same level. They want to go live in the woods and eat mushrooms and be left the hell alone, but mm-hmm. they've sort of been thrust into this crusader mission. So let's go get it done. Okay. So we have a plan. All right. It sounds like a plan. there's a plan. So before we, we don't just... have a plan, we, we have a goal. <laughs> we have Bardo, a goal. Bardo's, we have Bardo's the, a plan. the smartest guy in the, in the, in the party is like, uh, before we before we declare that we have a plan, I just want to say there is no plan. There's no plan. <laughs> and there's the smart one. Thank you, Bardos. <laughs> yeah, this is a you have a vision board. <laughs> yeah. it's more like it's more like a, a Pinterest page, you know, uh, uh, of stuff. You know, a couple of ideas, a couple of color swatches, but uh, you know, you're getting there. All right, so so your next step would theoretically be well, you have to leave this place. Probably the plan. But yeah, it would be uh, uh, you guys got to talk about what step one of the plan is. Uh, all right, be to go to Blackburn, right? Because that's the closest thing to the tower where that is his tower. So Baphomet Tower, yeah, Baphomet Tower is in Blackburn, and Bardos has a a solid line on that, even without my help, right? Because of the book. Not only because of the, yeah, he could definitely get you guys to Blackburg. Uh, also, those um, those teleport scrolls that you took off the uh, fly headed demons are attuned to there. Are attuned to Blackburg. So you can only, I mean, but they were, uh, well, I guess they would be able to teleport more than one. Uh, it's a spell, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, theoretically, that the, you could bend the spell to your needs. A teleport spell, um, I'd have to check the caster level, but actually, you know what? I can tell you what the caster level is. Pretty quickly. Guys, I gotta sign off. Have a good uh, one. Yeah, you yeah. got to. Night. Okay. All right. Uh, hold on. Let me check the caster level real quick, and then I'll let you guys go. Caster level is twelfth. So it would be essentially a twelfth level uh, teleport spell. So whatever with whatever. So if you can bring people along with you these and touch were, creatures. Yeah. How many was that? Touch creatures as long as they're touching. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're it's it's basically the same power as yours. A little less, but yeah. Oh wait a minute. No, there's a there's a limit here. Uh, uh one additional willing medium per three caster levels. So per you and two. You and four other people. Yeah. Well, either way, we can do it with yeah. multiple ones. Do I need to wait? I'm a, I mean I can cast some stuff. Is there something I need to learn? I don't know what little I can learn, but I don't know. Uh, you can't do teleport. No. It's probably a black so. market where we're going, right? Or those call it the white market, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, probably the white market. All right, uh, just you guys, I'll I'll sit out. I'll let you guys go. Um, but uh, just want to let you know that when we get into November, I'm going to be gone. 
um, a couple of weekends. I don't know yet that it will affect Sunday night games uh, because I just don't know what the time frame is going to. I'm hoping not, um, but there are a couple of weekends. So it's the end of the swim season is coming up in November, and we're gonna we have two weekends in a row. One weekend here in St. Peter's, and another we have uh, a big meet in Carbondale. So we'll be gone pretty much the whole weekends. But I don't know that it will affect Sundays. But I'll let you know if it does. Okay. All right. All right. And Thanks, no, you guys. No, this was awesome. And Gordon on the Wednesday night thing. Yep. I will be. I'll be gone on the 17th, but I think all of the rest of them should be good for me. So I, I, I'm in and I, I don't think I should miss too many. Occasionally I get asked to sub on Wednesdays, but uh, I mean, we'll see where we are and I'll accept or decline as necessary. Okay, cool. Gordon, I will be back. I've just been really busy with this trivia night I've got coming up that I'm hosting or emceeing at least. So. I, I would love to hear about that. I, I've, done, uh, I've been doing trivia nights for a while now, but. I hosted one for the, for the Triviality podcast. You know, those as, as soon as I find out uh, who to contact, I'm going to send you guys stuff about it because it's uh, Mike. Mike should be really interested. It's twenty five dollars a person, but it includes all you can drink. So uh, <laughs> touchdown! <laughs> hey, Hi, soft guys. drinks are included in there. I'll check and see if they have Dr Pepper. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. All right. Good night, all right. Good night you guys. Thanks. Thanks guys. It was fun. Thank you. See ya. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Night, Dan.